Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the New Age Geeks channel. I'm Cece, and tonight we have a queer and present danger one year recap and discussion. Granted, I know it's not exactly one year, but it's close enough. <laughs> but so tonight we will be recapping what has happened so far and also discussing the campaign so far uh, as a group. Um, just a little friendly reminder that here on the New Age Geeks channel, we aim to create a space where everybody feels welcome at our table. We want you here. And then I will pass it over. Hello, hello. Did you know that the New Age Geeks includes more than just us? It relies on all of you wonderful geeks and your participation in the community that we're building together. If you want to become one of the New Age Geeks, you can. Just join our Discord, subscribe to our Twitch and YouTube channels, where you'll find moderated chats, emotes by one of our favorite geeks, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And chat rooms with the cast and other members of our growing community. Remember, the best way to help us without the algorithm is engagement. So watch the video all the way through. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that these platforms know to share us with everyone else. Speaking of engagement, we would love it if you would please make sure to clip any of your favorite moments of the show. The funny moments, the sad moments, anything you like. Beyond that, we have posts going up on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and threads. If you're on any of those platforms, make sure to follow us there as well for more geeky goodness. September is September. No, not like that. It is for subscriptions so that you can subtract 30% off of all your subscriptions. Yeah, I see that look. Don't look at me like that. You get 30% off all new subscriptions in the month of September. If you are not following the New Age Geeks, now is the time to do it. Additionally, if you are already paying for Amazon Prime, Twitch Prime is free. Don't need 30% off when you've got 100% off. Twitch Prime awards you a one month subscription to any channel here on Twitch. And once per month, you do need to go in and resubscribe to that channel, but it's at no additional cost. Just link your accounts in Amazon and then come back here and click subscribe with Prime on the channel of your choosing, like New Age Geeks. Perhaps, maybe, do it. If you're feeling charitable, please subscribe gift subscriptions, cheer using bits, donate via PayPal, check out our merch shop, subscribe to our Patreon, and if you wish to sponsor the New Age Geeks, reach out to us directly via our Instagram page to begin those discussions. And uh, speaking of sponsorships, if you enjoy the music we have going on here at the New Age Geeks channel, we highly recommend checking out the Songcraft bot. The Songcraft bot allows you to play open source community selected music and soundscapes directly from your Discord server. Whether you're playing on Twitch or just playing with friends, you can use the audio stress free. With their pro level subscription, you get their playlist builder, shareable playlist codes, access to 40 plus music genres and 20 plus soundscape types, global genre selections, and two premium Discord servers, all for just 10 bucks a month. But if you use our referral code NAG, N as in Nancy, A as in Alan, G as in Gregory, it will get you $2 off of your subscription for the first three months. All you need to do get, to get started is invite the Songcraft bot of your choosing to your Discord server, and then let just hit play and let Songcraft take care of the rest. So without further ado, um, just one last announcement is tomorrow we do have investigation check with recovering academic aka forest uh next week we have forging fates on monday it's gonna be an intense session guys and then next thursday we also have investigation check with zach savage so make sure to tune in for those but without further ado we can go ahead and get into tonight's recap and discussion of queer and present danger we shall so, hi everybody. How are you doing? Hi. hi. Hey. Um, I figured we could start by going around the table and saying, like, reintroducing yourself, your pronouns, your character, 
and just like a general description of your character. Um, so whoever would like to start, or else I will pick. <laughs> All right, Sam, why don't you go start us off? Hi, uh, I am Sam, aka Arleth. Um, I go by she, her, Faye, um, and I play Talia, a uh, <laughs> traumatized teenage elven mystery. <laughs> Love that. All right, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Delay in the inevitable. I'll do it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dom, short for Damiano. Uh, I play. Oh, wait. Is it name? Pronouns. I use they, them pronouns. Please. Thank you. I am non binary and pansexual. I am playing Toby, Tobias. Uh, he is a 12 year old turtle wizard. Uh, who is designed very specifically to not be traumatized so that he can be traumatized. I've ever told you how much I love you as a player. Maybe once or twice. Good. Anyways. All right, you two got to duke it out. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I did it too early a second ago. <laughs> that was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I am Hans or Hans, just depending. Everyone says it different. I've given up correcting people. Hello, you can find me over at Hans Kate. Uh, I use she, they pronouns. Also a proud pansexual. And I play Ashira, the sea elf cleric who is not questioning her faith at all. <laughs> That's and suspicious. only makes only makes really good sound decisions in game. Oh, well, now we're just lying. <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Positive. All right. Last but not least. Hello, I am Rima, and um, my pronouns are she, they. I'm bisexual. I know it's very surprising by the flag. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> I play Bloom, which is a 10-year-old tiefling wizard warlock. Um, she's a oh, necromancer. And yes, I'm Toby's best friend. And we are uh, pretty chaotic together. Um, and my I I kind of like that, you know, we're we're also opposites because like my my child is like so traumatized she hasn't even really processed it yet so you know our our journey is uh you know a 10 year old discovering grief yes unfortunately but it makes for good storytelling and just as a reminder my name is cc my pronouns are they them and i am also bisexual um, I am the GM and creator of this lovely game, and I want to wish everybody a happy uh, Bisexual Visibility Month, by the way. But hopping right into everything, how does everybody feel about being a year in so far? It doesn't feel like it's been a year, honestly. Honestly. It's really exciting, though. That. I remember uh, before the stream started, you and I were talking about, oh yeah, I have this idea. I want to have an all queer cast and I'm going to homebrew the whole thing. And I'm like, yeah, all right, we'll, we'll make it work. And that was over a year ago. And it blows my mind. The yeah, fact well, that New Age Geeks has been going for what, two and a half years now? Yeah, two and a half. Goodness gracious. Well, and because we had hosted auditions in, like, June or July, maybe August? Early as May, because one of the one-shots was on Mother's Day. I remember that. Oh, no! <laughs> it's 
Trump. Sorry, Mom. That, that was our <laughs> thought. We killed a bomb on Mother's Day. I was gonna say, did you guys want to reflect on your auditions at all? And how the process <laughs> went for you? We didn't kill a mom on Mother's Day, but we did kill a mom. It was, it was Mother's Day. Hi, mom of the group. Who remembers that? Um, I do want to say, um, just as uh, for everybody in the chat, that for the audition process, I had four separate groups, and I basically ran the exact same one shot for each group. Um, and how they dealt with it and how they interacted with each other is how we decided upon the players. But because you can't predict how everything's going to go, I had four completely different endings for each group, which I'm really happy about. But anyways, please continue about your audition experience. I remember it so vividly that... Um... I'm going to let somebody else go first. <laughs> well, we already spoke about the Mother's Day one, so y'all have to go first cuz I I don't, <laughs> I wasn't in the Mother's Day one. I was I was in like the very very last one. I just remember I it think being... here you go. I was just going to say I think Aerith and Remo were in the same one. We weren't in the Mother's Day one though, were we? We were in like the no, very No, like last you two one. were in the same one Aerith's that was at a later date. Oh, okay. <laughs> I might be getting it confused, but there was so many people. But continue. Sorry. Um, I just remember our group. We were so vastly different because I think I was I was a monk in my audition. And we were. Yeah. I think we I felt so bad because we got into combat and I just stunned CC's creature. And CC was just like, I had not planned for this. And then I think my just my favorite part is at the very end, we realized like there was a chest. What was in the chest was a small child. It was like a mermaid child or something. Uh, and then we all immediately started panicking as a group because we realized we had just killed this baby's mom. It was just defending the baby. It did, you know, well, I mean, it, it did sink some ships and like a whole bunch of other bad things. So it's fine. But we were like, we killed them all on Mother's Day. And thing is, I had completely forgotten it was Mother's Day, even though I went up to my parents' house earlier that day to go celebrate. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were a little chaotic. We were, like, running on the roof. We were casting fly spells so no one had to touch the water. And you were like, you guys could just go get it. And we are like, no. <laughs> Let's make this the most convoluted <laughs> 20 minutes of this session that we can. And it was really fun. Yeah, like, it was a good time. I feel like... In my audition, we we realized before the like we realized pretty early on that it was just a mother protecting its young, and like the baby was in the chest because uh, we had found like a little carving of a, a a mermaid and like it seemed too sentimental and and like we didn't kill the hag. <laughs> the sea hag or whatever mermaid siren monstrosity that it was like we, we made it we made a deal with it of like we'll we'll leave you alive and we'll tell people there's no treasure here and mm. you take care of your baby and whatever else and like maybe don't set it up in a treasure chest <laughs> with a spotlight on it <laughs> maybe listen i never said she was an intelligent creature but sirens are very intelligent. That's what's... But when you're acting in a fit of rage, brain turns off. I remember from ours, uh, I was playing a very pretty little barbarian mm. uh, character. Yeah. And very, very um, rude to everybody. She just had an attitude. Um, <laughs> Nice. Um, and Rima was a druid and had like like wild shaped into like a oh my giant God. crocodile or something. Yeah, it was a crocodile. I also I, I was a druid that 
um, I was germaphobic because I thought it would be funny to have a druid that's scared of dirt. Um, but uh, it was it was really funny because like our group, there were only like two of us that had like a high enough like intelligence to try to figure out like what this creature was and like that there was a a baby in the treasure chest and all of us as players were like we know what's happening here okay as players though both of us rolled so poorly that all of us were like well i guess there's just a monster in there and that's a beautiful treasure chest full of probably gold like and we just had to continue on like we had no clue what was happening um and all of us were kind of like man we're gonna kill a mom we're gonna kill a big monster that's attacking me in my crocodile form Very here's scary. the thing <laughs> Rima with your crocodile form you kept that bitch grappled the entire time she could not do anything that, that was the one thing about the audition where I'm just sitting here like, shit, I need to prepare myself for players who are going to pull shit like this. Like, they're going to be grappled the entire time. Ashira, don't get any ideas. Anyways. Um, <laughs> that crocodile wild shape is, like, strong. Because you're, you're yeah. prone and, like, you're, you are... You are not just grappled. Like, you are, like, And I kept rolling too. so poorly to break the grapple. You broke it, and then I got an opportunity attack, and I used it to grapple you. To grapple like, me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, yeah, I mean, my fuck girl, uh, fuck girl barbarian was like, ah, a chance to impress everybody. <laughs> that wow. was so cool. That was so cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely love the audition process. It was a ton of fun. But, um... I guess moving on to the actual campaign with starting with the first few sessions or I guess the first session where you all met at the wedding and then killed some doppelgangers and then you got that crazy vision at the end of the uh, the first session. How did you guys all feel about that first session that we had? That was intense. It was combat and role play and lore all wrapped up into one it was fantastic it was really a great way to kick off the campaign it was like it was wild going into it because you kind of got to see all of our reactions live time to figuring out who we all were playing because like outside of character i had no clue that the two of you were going to be children <laughs> i knew i knew toby going in mm -hmm. but then i was like oh my god there's a second kid and just like that immediate was like, oh no. But also just like how disarming Bloom and Wither was like right off the bat. Like so cute, but also like, how, why, how are you here? This child's traveled so far. It was, it was so amazing to just experience that and not have any of that like, um, kind of like meta knowledge going in of what you guys were playing. It was just really entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, I really appreciated that everybody kind of kept their character, like, story descriptions, like, under wraps until we played. And it's like, nah, you'll see, you'll see. Um, we had, like, mm. the littlest of inkling of, like, oh, I'm going to play this class or, you know, whatever. But that mm. was kind of it. Um, and it was really cool to see the dynamics. And even now, like, as those dynamics have changed, um, has been wild. I'm really happy that like there was another child in the campaign. At first I was like, oh no, is this going to be like, you know, too many like, like children to adult ratio? Like, is this going to be like awkward if I like also made a child too? Like, but, um, it, it actually works really, really well. It works so like. No, because because now like two children have someone to like kind of bounce the ridiculousness off of and validate the other one, and then they just like feed into each other's like BS 
So I, I actually really one of like my it. Favorite parts of, of our relationship and character is like, you just, you could say some wild shit, and I'll just be like, oh yeah, of course, just absolutely, that makes perfect sense. Whether it does or not is irrelevant. But just yes, and the whole like chaos thing, and it's just bouncing off of that with you is by far like one of the greatest joys of being a chaotic little turtle. Yeah, I I guess I was gonna say because um, uh, Talia was originally paired up with Irawu. Um, Starshine, if you're watching this, we miss you. I love you. I hope you're doing well. Because so Talia and Irawu were paired up together. Toby and Ashira were paired up together. And then Bloom, you came into this without with, a pairing with all by yourself. I, came in I mean, you had Wither, <laughs> but Wither, without another PC. Yeah. Uh, was that intimidating to you at all, or? No, no. I think it it fit her the best. You know, like she she was kind of like a child wanderer that, you know, we all had a vision together. So, you know, she decided like maybe I should stick around with these people. You know, maybe mm -hmm. there's some knowledge in this that I need and um you know but but for the most part like she kind of just wanted to follow wherever the knowledge is and it kind of makes sense that you know uh she would only kind of be hanging out with adults because it's really hard to do anything when you're like a child by themselves everyone's like wondering like where where is your adult so yeah i mean know. the first thing we see of you is you lying to the guard saying that your parents were inside <laughs> yeah that come from practice right there <laughs> but yeah so that um i'm curious how you guys all felt about the vision that you all shared of the battlefield and that mysterious figure in the center of it so good just like that immediate every single one of us having like again you got to see like the live reaction we didn't know this was coming and it was like it was wild in a way that we all immediately were so invested as characters and players being like oh it's not just a silly little thing like this is really bad <laughs> it was wild it was so good cc just like props thank to you, you. <laughs> I knew you had prepped something just to launch us into it. And you had hit me with the, I want to tell you, but I can't tell you, but I want to tell you, but I can't tell you. I'm just like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. And you dropped that, that vision at the end of the episode. And I'm just like, oh shit, gotta take notes. <laughs> just, just frantically scrambling to, to write down everything that happened and just, I love the immersion of it and, and just the detail you put into it was great and the lack of certain specifics kept us guessing and I think that made it even better it was just like the mystery of a vision from a god is a certain degree of ambiguity and you hit that perfectly thank you yeah, and like, what a way to end a first session to like, mm -hmm. like, gotta keep you guys wanting to come back. No, oh, gotta give you, you the don't mystery. Have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that <laughs> at all. Me. It was good though. It was good to like show us what was at stake. You know, mm -hmm. it's something I've I've really appreciated about your style of DMing. Is in the past when I've played games it's mostly been in person and we end just when we get tired there's no like planned ending of, of a session so like playing a campaign that that is running out like episodically like this is is a whole new experience and it's, it's amazing oh. Yeah, I guess one of my biggest reasons for giving you that vision, um, I mean, A, for the storytelling aspect, but also B, is like, I need you 
all to have a reason to continue to stick together because mm. there's a lot of D&D campaigns it's like oh you all fight the same monster together but what reason do you have to stick together so I felt like giving you all that vision really I guess assisted with that for sure and just like the description itself was again yeah kind of I guess like to Dom's point of like it was like shifty enough that like we didn't know for certain what was going on but also like so detailed in other ways that it stuck with us the minute later on you mentioned anything remotely close we're all like hold up no can you just back that up for a second because this sounds very familiar it's so good yeah and then so I guess moving on after the first episode where you guys were searching for Anessa um where you traveled throughout the town well I guess the second episode was adventures in babysitting (laughs) with um Talia uh Toby and Bloom where you guys were sort of just exploring having fun during the autumn harvest festival playing games you saw um Willie Wisp um the performer um one of you almost or I guess one of you got robbed by goblins and then you guys also met Henry for the first time that's right that was the episode we we met him that far back yeah, you met him in the second episode. He was handing out the mystery potions. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, you guys. And, him. Yep, and, <laughs> and you stole, stole his bag. bag of holding. I remember being so excited <laughs> to tell, oh, like, Hans and Starshine that we got a bag of holding. Uh huh. <laughs> I still am just in so much disbelief of you guys doing that. And then just immediately, we're like, we're going to help this man, but he can never find out what we did. <laughs> What a a chain of events, you Wild. know? Like we directly contributed to that man's divorce, <laughs> and hey, then we're like, he was already to... divorced. He was paying child support. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> the thing is, you guys no, don't we, find that we, out until later on. Yeah, we got him to pay child support. That's true. Yes, by hiring him. Yeah, he's yeah. fully employed now. I don't. That's you know what that's true. You when still one stole his shit. I did it. <laughs> I'm I'm a chaotic neutral character. It's, it's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Um. But yeah, it, it's because episode two we were missing two of our players. Mm-hmm. Um. So we just had the three of you sort of adventuring around. Um, yeah. did you have any favorite moments from that session at all? Or, um, I guess thoughts on just, I, I felt, I feel like it was like an episode where you guys were just out there having fun, not necessarily doing any investigation or anything regarding the princess. We didn't yeah, want I mean, to do too much, like without everybody. Yeah. It was yeah, fun. Though. I was about to say that, um, it was a filler. Yeah, filler that early in. Yeah. Um, hey, life no, happens, I, you guys, and that's okay. I felt you really do. like what Rima just said is just, we didn't want to progress the story too far without, you know, the main cast member. Right. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> It was so fun. Like, I, I messaged Damiano ahead of time. And again, we had only played one session together, but I just DM'd them and I was like, so chaos? And they were like, yeah, chaos. Like, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna like make Talia's life miserable, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that was when you cast Firebolt for the first time, right? At the Goblin, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was my highlight. Uh, I remember somebody taking a potion and drinking it and turning into a giant. That was Bloom. Uh-huh. That was the yeah, best Bloom one turned for into me. a giant, and then Toby, when you took a potion, you got super small. Huh? Um. 
I, I, I don't think Talia ever drank a potion, though, out of I Henry's I was, bag. I was too suspicious about them. I mean, that's completely fair. That was the right choice. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. Um, but so then we kind of ended off that session after you guys had stolen the bag of holding. And the next session, we return with Ashira, your first vision from Nero's. Mm, yep. <laughs> what was that like for you? I think me as a player was wild because all I remember is you saying, don't worry, I have something for you. <laughs> Which is well, terrifying yeah. to hear from your DM. <laughs> well, it's um, that thing where it's like, if your player misses a session, I'm sitting here like, okay, you missed a session, but I still want to give you something. Like, give <laughs> you a reason that your character was gone for that session. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I came up with. A vision from Neros. Or <laughs> him literally yoinking you, bringing you yeah. someplace, and then putting you back. Yeah, it was it was wild in the way she hadn't really had any, like, any direct anything from him since she left her home. And then all of a sudden to be there, having had the first vision, and then that second one, where it was just, like, the destroyed temple, and everything was, like, real bad, and him being like, hey, I need you to, like, step it up. <laughs> get your shit together. <laughs> Things are really bad. <laughs> They're gonna get worse. I think it was wild. It's like, for Ashira, it very much, I don't know, it was, she was like, oh, maybe, I don't know, again, that, that struggle with faith thing of like, okay, maybe I did not fail him. Maybe he still like has that faith back in me too. Maybe this is the right path. And it was, it was crazy. And then to go and tell you guys that she had had it and you're all like, that's wild. That's crazy. <laughs> But no, it was really cool. Forget stealing a bag of holding. That shit's crazy. It was really cool. I just like to imagine these are happening at the same time, and it's so that like you cut back and forth between the two scenes in the timeline. <laughs> and it's, it's just like grim, dark, and scary, and then you three. And I'm like, I love <laughs> the opposing. <laughs> Where I'm like, the best the Benny Hill music in the background. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> we gotta do that again. Or <laughs> I was gonna say we have a session coming up where hands may not be here. We might have adventures and babysitting again. Yeah, is this the beach episode? <laughs> <laughs> Without the sea elf tempest cleric? That's true. We can't do that. I'm sorry. Be... <laughs> that would I and the hero would be so sad. Jokes on you, you get to the beach, she's already there. Um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah going on to the investigation of Anessa and her whereabouts because that took yeah, a few her, episodes just a few her, <laughs> just it took a us few. a while to find D <laughs> I, I mean, cannot I tell you how D. much <laughs> I regret <laughs> doing that sometimes the D is well hidden I Sometimes am going the to day we find a lot kill of <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you all. I'm going to yeah. restart the game. TPK. <laughs> At the beach episode. <laughs> After the beach episode, you all die. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to hit factory backups. reset. <laughs> I think that would be kind of fun, though. Like, having a like different TPK group. No, no, I was like, just going to say having a completely different group uh, trying to achieve the same thing that you guys are. I think that'd be fun. Hmm. Like, imagine if somebody else got a vision on the other side of the world. That's, that's you don't know. Are just like, over there. <laughs> you are my chosen people. And then go somewhere else. You are my chosen people. <laughs> you gotta have backups, else. man. <laughs> that's true. That's all of our, our backup characters. We could just... <laughs> <laughs> We're the B team. <laughs> A princess Tessa, we found her. Yes. And then we <laughs> queered present danger as presented by Wish. We <laughs> brought to you by Walmart. You guys are Target. That other group on the other side of the world is Walmart. 
Amazing. I'm glad we're target. 100%. Yeah, characters, of course we are. But bringing it back to the topic, <laughs> um, searching for Anessa, meeting Dorian, that whole storyline. How do you guys feel about that? Any favorite moments from those few couple of sessions? And also, you guys found out, um, I believe, about Rory being missing during that time as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, the mystery and intrigue and, and detective work for me was really an enjoyable part of it. Like unraveling a mystery is is, is just fun. Picking it apart is, is like what happened, where everybody is, um, who's playing for what team and you know having dorian be dorian right like just all that chaos and, and how he might not even be dorian because we found another dorian and we fought yeah. two dorians and took out one of them and saved the other i guess well no because because during that battle with the two dorians um I, I think it was Ashira that cast command and said, command and said shift shift, shift uh -huh. yep and one of them changed into a doppelganger one of them changed yeah. into, changed into a fucking cheetah um, <laughs> yeah. or a large ass cat but they both shifted yeah that's true but we were able to kind of see I guess yeah which one shifted back see what because we got the doppelganger. Uh, it's fine. I trust hold on, our my Dorian um, with my whole. <laughs> well, yeah, because later on, yeah, that's an yeah, completely you different. You definitely showed that you trust him. <laughs> that's not problematic at all. Looking at my notes too. Definitely not going to come back and bite us in the ass. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But no, like I the don't introduction. Think knows about it. Toby, no, because well, Toby was there. there when it happened. You just unfortunately you were all missed walking that away, episode. and I turned back, and I, in front of all yeah, of you, you was like, "Yeah, we'll get there. It's fine." <laughs> but doppelgangers. Shout out to Cece for throwing doppelgangers and mirrors at us in such I... a fashion that we all are traumatized now. Well. I guess that's the thing, it's like, as a newbie DM, being that I made the mistake of throwing doppelgangers at you at the first episode, and now you don't trust any NPC that you meet, I threw myself under the bus for that one. But, like, it's become a recurring theme. And, and it's like, yeah. good. It's, it is good, though. I do like that. I like that we're not necessarily like trusting everybody right off the bat just because they say they'll help us mm -hmm. also though i have to interject um <laughs> recently watching a cartoon series um and went oh my god that's what we're doing in our campaign um because i was watching uh dragon prince uh mystery of avaros mm -hmm. and there's literally like a mirror prison in it and <laughs> don't, don't, was, give like, me. Don't, give, don't give cc more ideas <laughs> like, oh shit time to add that to my watch list <laughs> a mirror um, prison <laughs> i was like it, it's literally this portal to this place we're doing that in our campaign was, what like blew my mind <laughs> i will tell you that i have never watched dragon prince I, I, I want to get that right off did. the bat. Nobody just, sue us. It was just one of those like coincidence moments where I was like, "This is interesting." Mm -hmm. It's a good story, so. And they stole it from us. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> Coming for you. Anyways, um, yeah. So. I guess during that whole arc, you met Dorian. I believe that's when you guys found out that Henry was a deadbeat dad who wasn't playing child, wasn't paying child support. How dare! Couldn't pay child support. <laughs> well, couldn't pay money. child support because you guys stole his shit. 
no, 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 no. He was out there hustling and selling illegal, <laughs> unmarked potions. You gotta do what you gotta do. Who said it was illegal, <laughs> Don? It's just not recommended. Exactly. <laughs> Suggestions versus laws. There's a difference. I mean, whose potions were they? Why was he selling he them off a soap box instead of at the shop? Make them. He wants to be a potion maker. He's just not very good at it. Yeah, because and... he, he has actively told you guys he wanted to become an alchemist. He wanted to make potions. Man's running a side hustle on the street instead of getting a real job. You gotta make ends meet somehow, dude. Have you seen Maybe Henry's bad at interviews. Like, that's I mean, why he we didn't helped talk him. that well to us, so. <laughs> True. We saved his life. No, you saved his wallet. We did the hokey pokey and we turned his life around. And that's really what it's all about. <laughs> Rock falls, Toby dies. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I just need a compilation of me saying that throughout this campaign. Because I guarantee you it'll be at least two minutes long by this point. Beautiful. I'm here for it. Decent amount of them are my fault. Fair. There's a couple <laughs> that were Han's fault. Um, so. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> hey there, Delilah. <laughs> I am good. not. I, I don't regret it. I just regret it, the pause of me not doing it instantly. I fought it, and I was like, it has to be said. You're like, I'm That's trying like not to. I'm trying part, not to. Though. I got it. That's the, the best face part. Is, like, I watched it back, and just my face journey, I was like, oh my god. It's <laughs> fine. You can see when it comes into your brain, and you're, like, thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But... Again, reining us all in as you guys enter the dream realm uh, with Dorian as he cast mm. Plane Shift to go get Anessa. How did you guys I all feel about that? Like, so literally being. And so terrified. Transported to another realm of existence. Bloom was stoked. Okay. Rima was terrified. <laughs> I was really kind of excited about it, honestly. Um, just because, like, you know, me meta knowledge about, like, oh, I kind of, I kind of know where this is going, um, and I was kind of excited to see what would come of it. Yeah, I think Ashira was just immediately like panicked. <laughs> I, but I wanted to stay. Like Toby didn't. I did. I wanted to just explore and see what you had cooked up and, and what that realm was and, and did and how it functioned and, and like deepened the mess, the mystery and, and just dissect it. Still playing investigator, it just it's a puzzle and I wanted to piece it together and, and like we're, we're still missing so many pieces of it. And again, curious and terrified. Well, you guys can always go back and there's always going to be chances for you to go back if you so choose. And break all the mirrors. No going back. Um, yeah, but after you guys rescued Princess Anessa, brought her home and back to her parents because um, I guess because they gave you the money for rescuing Anessa and then you guys did a little more investigating to figure out where you could find more mirrors which then brought you or led you on your travel to Nistra mm -hmm. so on the way to Nistra you guys met Stevie the NPC based on my cat because I had to self insert her in some fashion. A wild encounter. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Just encounter. Well, and because uh, Dom, you and I had talked about this when I first introduced, was beginning to introduce Stevie, you thought I was bringing in one of the PCs that I had made previously that I wanted to play matches. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned the uh, 
the character and, and like based on the description it sounded like you had just altered matches just a little bit and i'm just like is it, it is this the thing you told me about it, did you really put and then we got into it's stevie and i'm just like your cat <laughs> Yeah, for those, um, I'll probably bring Stevie in later on, but for those of you who don't know, I have a, like, a, she was called a diluted calico, but I call her a pastel torty because she is, um, cat, and <laughs> I, I thought it would just be a fun way to, it would be an easier way to make NPCs is based them off of either people I know, or, you know, pets and I thought Stevie would really be a fun addition guiding you along for um, at least this little adventure where you guys found the um, abandoned temple of Sopera the lost episodes we only lost one episode and we will get to that <laughs> I'm so mad about that but it, it's fine it um, does count <laughs> it does Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit, it counts. Anyways, <laughs> when she leads you to the Lost Temple of Sopera, it's basically riddled with puzzles. So... Yeah, the the thing with the eye. Yeah. What was that? It was so cool. I just had to say, it was my favorite episode I think we've done, I'm not gonna lie. I love it. It was that. a lot of fun. So, the thing with the eye is one of my favorite monsters um if you don't know it look it up it's called a decapus um so it's got 10 tentacles and it looks Crazy. derpy it looks derpy as fuck there's no way of sugarcoating it it looks weird at first but as the more you look at it you're like you know this is kind of cute no <laughs> Granted, the picture you guys got on the map was only its face going like yeah. Like it was hilarious. I'm like, what the what the fuck is that? Look up a decapus. I love it. It's so much fun. I probably will end up using them again at some point. But oh, no. well, and then because Ashira, you did used uh like divine sense. And because it was a monstrosity, it didn't pick up on your radar. Well, like a uh, detect evil and good. Yeah, and it was one of the first times I was like, "We're gonna test this out," and then nothing pinged, and I was like, "Nope, okay, <laughs> we're good, we're good." Eyeball opens in the middle of the room. We're not okay. Go back. Mm. back. <laughs> Hold on, take it back, take it back, take it back. <laughs> Put it in reverse, Terry. Um, but yeah, because that was like one of my first times like running a puzzle encounter. Um, I will shout out my roommate Maggie, one of my best friends. She helped me come up with the puzzles and such. And so I personally had a lot of fun with it. What did you guys think? I love puzzles and I loved just like the temple and the description you had. It was, it was just a really good time. I just enjoyed it. It was so good. I. I, I just, I'm going to second everything that, that uh, Hans just said. No notes. Perfect assessment. <laughs> I love puzzles in general. Like, it, that, it, it's always been some of my favorite, like, style of video games. Um, hey, are you guys neurodivergent too? Um, but having them in this type of game is Jeff's kiss. I love puzzles, and I, I'm an analyst uh, in real life, so... I, I'm always down for a good like puzzle game or a mystery to solve. I guess my thing is is I definitely want to incorporate more puzzles. Like so many people joke about like, oh, I use puzzle for like elementary school kids and my players couldn't figure it out. And I'm sitting here like, knowing you guys, you'd be able to figure it out. If I gave you a riddle that only like people getting their PhD could solve, like I feel like you guys could fucking solve it. Like so I'm sitting here like, how do I stump these guys? <laughs> I need I mean, to make the, it the so dumb. In front of us. I just need to make it so dumb. 
That's probably how you get us, actually. You just make them dumber and dumber. And then, like, I got you. The most basic thing, because we're going to 100% overthink it so hard. Well, I guess with that episode, <laughs> is like there was the mirror with the incomplete like case around it. Mm -hmm. I kept trying to hint that you guys could take out the mirror and then put the blade in. And then it took Stevie. It's like, oh, well, why don't you try taking out the mirror? <laughs> Listen, sometimes it's obvious, and sometimes you have to say it flat out, directly, in no uncertain terms, in order mm -hmm. for us to get it. We're, we're kind of smart that way. Yeah, a couple of them you finished describing, and we all were like, this is what we're doing, and then we're like, okay, next one. <laughs> yep. That one, though, we were all like, what do we do with this? <laughs> <laughs> Stevie for the win. But then, yeah, Talia got a really cool blade out of it. A really cool dagger. Mm -hmm. I, I got to use, I've gotten to use once so far, and it didn't do anything, because it didn't have anything to react against. But uh, Yeah, okay. so that, uh, fun fact, that dagger is one of my homebrew items. Um, yeah. Little self-promo, I make D&D &D homebrew items when I'm able to. Um, should I just tell you guys what it does, then? I kind of want to find out no, now. I really. want it to be in game. Yeah, I have the yeah. I have the stats for it. You sent me the stat block for it. You put it on my thing. Yeah. So, so if I you know. guys, if you three want to plug your ears or deafen yourselves, I will tell the audience what it does. <laughs> so okay, oh, no. because Talia, you already know. Erlith, you already know. But so it's called the Wisdom's Edge Dagger. Um, it is a dagger full of like intricate um, designs on it but if you strike a creature with that dagger it gives you advantage on insights against their like resistance vulnerabilities and immunities so it really helps if you are up close in combat and granted even if you have advantage it might not always work so and they're playing fucking patty cake these are my players guys It works really well, you know, a character who has not a lot of wisdom to be able to be like, I poke it. Oh, now I know things. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, I want to tell you something else about that dagger, but we will get to that later on in the campaign. Anyways. Y'all are good. You're good. Oh, hi, dear. Oh, hi, dear. Hi. Oh, hello. Welcome back. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, the dagger ended up leading you guys downstairs, and that's where we get Nothing into happened. our lost episode. Um, I cannot tell you how upset I am that we lost this episode. It was so good. Um, but we will give you basically a mini recap here for our lost episode. Um, so the team made their way down into the underground of this abandoned temple where they found this giant cavern that was abandoned, different li or leaves and vines growing around it, moss. Um, Toby runs up to the center where there's this altar type space with a chest. And as Toby runs up, he sees a ginormous figure uh, in armor that is dripping with acid. That's where we ended that episode. And the for oh, the gross. the lost episode contained the combat. Eh, nothing happened. You keep saying that, but a DM never forgets. I, I wasn't even there you. for that episode, and I remembered that you had, <laughs> you got hurt really bad because my character felt it. Oh yeah, I completely forgot you guys stole wedding gifts from Anessa. <laughs> no, and I just said a DM never children. forgets. <laughs> it's fine. Three oh, of the necklace, three of the players wings. are kleptos. One is not. <laughs> Somebody got shoes. Mm -hmm. But uh, weren't stolen. They're just taken but let's the wedding let's, didn't let's happen, talk about think. that acid though because that's another one of your your homebrews right mm -hmm. yeah so stamp. yeah so this was the guy the guy that you guys 
fought I called a corrosive warrior um, who was a homebrew monster. I have not like released him yet because I was essentially still working out the mechanics. But um, so the weapon that he wielded was a warhammer that was called the acid stamp. That was completely based off of me mishearing my roommate ordering a drink. My roommate ordered a drink called an ass in the sand, and I heard acid stamp. I whipped out my notebook that. at the bar that we were at, and I'm like, give me a minute. And I <laughs> drew it out. I, I shit that. you not, that is what happened. I believe it. Um, so cool. You know what? Let me pull it up really quick. But yeah, so he was meant to be a pretty tough fight, but I know three of you stayed uh, ranged <clears throat> attackers for the fight. And then when Ashira, you went, got right up in his business. Yeah, I see Ashira, even though she's a cleric, like she is built for melee combat. Mm -hmm. I made a call both me as the player and as a shira in the moment she was up like she was <laughs> she gets angry sometimes uh made the choice that i'd rather hit than heal did not go super well for me <laughs> yeah because you shouted at him you do you remember what you shouted oh goodness gracious um, probably something I do. Sense of like, I don't know, fuck, why don't you hit someone that can hit back? Or something. Yeah, he was like, know. why don't you pick on somebody your own size? There you go, yeah. So he was coming after me. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I tend to get upset when anything attacks our two amazing children. <laughs> We're just all helpless and little. Like yep. <laughs> don't touch my kids. I'm just a little guy. We're just a little guy. Yeah, I went down, and then I'm pretty sure it's past it now, but that first death save, because I only made one death save, was a one. It was a natural messaged, one, yeah. I had messaged CC, because we it was private, and uh, was like, yeah, that was a nat one, so... <laughs> we, were, we were really close to pretty early on in the game having our first character death. Yeah, <laughs> murdered you. Uh, but it's fine because it's because it Ashira's happen. not dead now. No, Ashira's I'm trying fine. to remember how did you get back up again? I think you uh, guys... Stevie. Stevie, Stevie, yeah, Stevie is the one who brought you back. She put yeah, her hands. She put her paws on your face. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. that was so hard. Like. Shout out to, like, obviously all of you guys, but, like, Dom as Toby. Just because, again, like, you two have talked about, like, Loom's experienced a lot of things. Toby, the complete opposite, very innocent. And, like, Dom's just emotional journey as Toby through that. Like, that was... I love RPing, and that was so, it was so good. Like, both of you, but, like, Toby... Like to this day, it was so game. good. I'm so mad we lost the role play because thing is, is like the way it Bloom also changed in combat too. Oh yeah, Bloom popped yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, Bloom Toby got the final <laughs> blow on that. Yeah, <laughs> Toby told her to fuck him up, so yeah. she was like, "You got it." <laughs> um, don't go into combat without your melee character. <laughs> character what do you mean <laughs> why i made toby a turtle <laughs> yeah ac 17 to start like the problem was that acid stamp was hitting me for like 23 to hit and I'm it just was. Like, There's, i yeah. had no way to not get hit by that that was just so insane. Yeah, me too. i feel like this is a good point to talk about the acid stamp um because it is a plus two warhammer that <laughs> requires an attunement by a barbarian. Um, so 
The acid stamp appears to be forged of dark and rare metal due to the anger of corrupt anger and corruption of the person who forged it, and it started to corrode, becoming a sickly green around the edges. When a creature is hit with this weapon, it must must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. And on a failed save, this weapon stamps a sigil onto them and the creature suffers the effect of the Crown of Madness spell for 1d6 rounds. And if you guys don't know, the Crown of Madness is a spell where you pick somebody and then you basically control who they attack during combat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the the thing is... Mm -hmm. There is no point in like using that ability with the acid stamp when Ashira was so far away from everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I but, so, got the weapon afterwards and I read it because it was something that potentially Ashira maybe would have been able to use. Don't don't worry about it. And was <laughs> looking at it and I was like, oh, oh, this could have gone so badly. Thank God they all listened and stayed back. Because, like, the player, I was like, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, because the base damage it does is 1d8 plus 2 and then 1d10 of acid damage. So 1d8 plus 2 of bludgeoning and then 1d10 of acid. Yeah, that that hurt. But thing is, is, like, if the wielder goes into a rage when using this weapon, they receive 1d4 of acid damage when they hit another creature due to the backsplash. If you're in a rage, so there's a cost. Yeah. yeah, so there's a cost. Like it's it's mm-hmm. an extremely powerful weapon, or I guess powerful enough, but it still has that like, okay, do I really want to wield this if there's a chance of me getting hurt by it? Yes. <laughs> Ashira, we'll get to that later. Anyways, <laughs> I got more uh, brewing in my head, so working on it i guess i have a question a little bit for dom just because that was something that like i guess for rima too because you were both like there and obviously like we we don't have it anymore but what was like that first because i know for me i was panicking a little bit as a player when i went down because i don't think like i don't know if any of us really knew that um Stevie could heal. I just yeah. Know, did you? Were you? How, what were you guys? I guess what was on your guys' side? What was that first like? I don't know. Thought other than Rima popping off as Bloom. <laughs> I'll let I'll let uh, Dom go first. <clears throat> I think there were a few thoughts all at once, right? Um, mm-hmm. One, oh shit, is it? Are we about to have a character death? Two. Oh, fuck. That's our healer. <laughs> Three. We don't have anybody to heal her. And can any of us actually carry her out of here to revive her? Uh, all this is going at once. And it's just like. We're about to get fucked up. And if Stevie hadn't come in clutch with that. uh the cure wounds. Oh no, I've lost all of you. Yeah, because Stevie had come in with the cure wounds to bring Ashira back. And we lost. Damiano cannot hear us. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, Hi welcome back. back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <clears throat> but yeah. What did cause... you hear? We, we heard Stevie all of this. came we in with the cure wounds. Yeah. yeah. We could oh, hear okay. you. Oh, that's nice, because <laughs> you all froze. And then I looked down and I saw I was the one who had froze. And I just, who knew? Um, Fine. Yeah, so until Stevie came in, I was just panicking of what are we going to do? And we can't lose hands. This is too early for a character death. This is, oh no, oh no, oh no. How is Toby going to react? 
Toby's never lost anybody before. Toby's never experienced anybody he cares about being hurt before. Like, Toby is the oldest of his batch of siblings. He's never had anybody he looks up to like this before, except Alagor, who just tells him stories. We've been traveling together for weeks. I knew you better than anybody else. So like, did I just lose the person I'm closest to so far from home without ever having experienced loss before? What does this look like to a child? You know? And yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it was... How do I... What's the next step, essentially, was, was mm -hmm. really going through my head a lot. Until Stevie came in with the cure wounds, my plan was going to be to try to get to you and, like, ask if I could use my action to just, like, shove a health potion <laughs> down your throat. Like, <laughs> like I, I was... That was my plan, but then I saw that... Um, the barbarian was like, "Ah, oh, Stevie! Stevie! This is Stevie. Oh, She's hi, Stevie. She's kind of camera shy. It's fine. She's so cute. Oh. He's perfect. Um, but yeah, I saw that he was targeting you, still Ashira, and and like your reaction to rolling your first death save was like not fantastic so i was sitting there thinking like okay one. worst case scenario they rolled a nat one and then this dude is gonna come by and finish it like like in one so so i was sitting there like do i even have enough movement uh i mean l luckily stevie came in clutch but like i think bloom Bloom had already experienced like death in front of her, but she having not really processed it a whole lot, I think that was like her first glimpse into processing it because she was like, not this again. You know, like mm -hmm. like I, I can't have like another person, like another adult, like you know, passing because they're like trying to, you know, protect me or you know, protect like so you know it's like her in her mind it's like i need to do better to like protect myself mm -hmm. and right. you know that was that was like the flip that happened she's like no like <laughs> this is this is how it's gonna be like we're we're not gonna do this again it was it was so good again it was one of those things where like my one of my favorite things about D, &D is like the role play part of it yeah so, like the after we finished that fight was some like my favorite RP we've had <clears throat> because it was emotional. And you guys are amazing. So thanks. Airless. Well, and then well, also okay. getting into the role play of the second half of the episode, because at one point Toby, you had offered Ashira a healing potion, and she declined it. Mm -hmm. But then Bloom offered her a slice. Oh, we completely forgot to mention the sparkling oranges. Uh -huh. <laughs> Another homebrew item. But because Ashira, you had been offered a slice from a sparkling orange and from Bloom, and you took it. I there was a thought process behind it, like as a Shira of someone else Stevie. down the line is gonna need that healing potion. And like I was fine. We were walking, we were you alive. You didn't know what the orange did, to be no, fair. Like still time, none of us know the what the orange, orange did meant. nothing the first time I ate it, because I was at full health and I rolled whatever the, the health option was. Yeah. So in her head, she was like, it's just an orange. But yeah, the immediate upset on Toby's face was so heartbreaking. But yeah. she didn't want to waste that health potion. We didn't have a whole lot of them. Immediate rejection of. <laughs> I. 
<laughs> did I do something wrong? <laughs> like, <laughs> why, why is my help not good enough? But you so readily accept help from somewhere else? Like, I, I'm sorry I got you hurt. Like, but oh, no, because it I'll, I'll be better. I'll and in better, like a Shira's mind, she's See, like, "Oh, I'm please. just taking this like dumb piece of orange because Bloom thinks it's like she's it's just orange." I think like, it was the uh -huh, lime. Okay, Kobe's sure. upset. I didn't take the potion. Maybe if I take this, he'll like be like, "Okay, she's at least doing something." <laughs> I oh, I feel so bad, but also you like broke Toby's heart. Hey, as the healer, she wants everyone else to have healing potions on them. <laughs> so that they can use them on themselves. Right. But you then- You get a potion and you get a potion. Everyone but me. <laughs> Needs to have potions on them. Yeah. So after that, you guys, like you had your little bit of rest in the abandoned temple and then made your way to the village of Nistra. Um, small village, you guys, Ended up meeting Stevie's boss, Charlotte, who is um, another cat inspired by my roommate's cat, Charlotte. Um, if you can't tell, I have a habit of using pets as NPCs. Just wait until you guys meet Toulouse. I can't um, wait. <laughs> you're gonna, gonna hate him. Is he gonna be loud? Oh, he's gonna be loud as hell. You already know. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so you, <laughs> you, he is. So you guys got to Nistra and you met Charlotte and you guys also found out, um, during that like travel time that Charlotte had sent Stevie out there. Okay. Bye. Are you leaving? No. Just going to mess with shit on my desk. So mm -hmm. back into the arms she goes, maybe. No. Okay. No. Anyways, Charlotte had sent Stevie out there by herself to retrieve to retrieve the book that you guys found. Mm -hmm. Hydrate. The, the omniscient codex. Oh, I can't. It's too far away. Why are you screaming? Hi. Yes, she's screaming right now. You cannot hear her, but it's screaming because Dom didn't hydrate. Also, oh, <laughs> thank you, James. Drink another one. My water's but, too far away. I can't. Sorry. Then you what? die. It says hydrate. Grab that water. Okay. Oh no. Well, Dom is dead. It is just us four for the rest of the stream. Uh, oh, <laughs> Toby. R.I.P. Yeah, Toby. Was, it's rough, buddy. But. Um, the Omniscient Codex um, is what you guys found in the underground of the abandoned temple. That was the evil Wild. book, right? Yeah. I wouldn't call it an evil book. It's the book that can wreck everything. The book that can destroy <laughs> the literal fabric of reality. It's fine. <laughs> but totally not. Evil. Also, I cast Revivify on Damiano. Counterspell. Oh, thank you. Counter spell your counterspell, bitch. Counterspell. I also have it. <laughs> <laughs> I counterspelled your counterspell. Their counterspell. Okay, <laughs> that's when you roll on the wild magic table. Um, you guys haven't come across that yet, so you'll find out later. Anyways, um, so the omniscient codex, the first anchor that you guys came in contact with that we know of first knowing anchor <laughs> that we know of i have thoughts that you of. know of that you've come in contact with i'm hoping toby's house is an anchor <laughs> that out there I'm really it's in the shape of an anchor so it's close i hope enough. The, well, i no, think it's, we know it's, it's i think my entire island might be one based off something yeah. 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 your entire city may be an anchor i'm hoping uh, the three giant turtle shells that make up toby's house are somehow uh, 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 an anchor of the same god. But who knows? Taking notes, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. 
I'm also hoping that uh, we find out more about Erla's backstory because there's like yeah nothing there's people revealed. following us now, but that's related. Yeah, the the cliffhanger we were left on at the end of last session, which we'll get there, but also how dare? It's fine. I, I love we'll get having there. Cryptic. We will stories. get there. It's my favorite. It's mm-hmm. so great, and I'm. <laughs> I have a page of notes. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Dom. I have a page of notes of like anytime your character, anytime Talia does anything remotely off, I flip to that page and add it to the list of things that Ashira's is like, huh, that's a little strange. We'll get back to that eventually. You you that's you have a, a who that's is Talia weird. page? I do. <laughs> Both I, I and Ashira has book one book too in her sketchbook. <laughs> I have a couple of theories cooking, and I stir all of them a little bit every time you speak. <laughs> every time you Iconic. speak, I'm like, mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so what did you all think of the Omniscient Codex after Toby identified it? I thought Wild. it needed to go immediately. I wanted Bloom to read it. <laughs> I wanted to read it too. I wanted to read the, so bad. Um, from what you guys could tell, this was probably the most powerful anchor of Sopera. And if this was destroyed, shit would be fucked. Excuse my language. Shit would be fucked. But I, I... So let's give it to a 10-year-old. It was wild. It was so cool, though, too. Again, it's one of those, like big lore drops that none of us really thought. We were just like, it's a magic book. Yeah. Until and, and Toby to identify. Was, and the immediate realization for all of us being like, oh no. I, so this is a fun fact, another one of my homebrew items. But this literally came to me in a fever dream. Amazing. Because I had Bad. been incredibly sick. I had taken my antibiotics. I went to go take a nap. I had a weird ass dream involving this book and I'm like I woke up I wrote it down and I'm like wait a second queer and present danger perfect (laughs) because when I'm sick I get really weird dreams fun fact I get really weird dreams period but they're even weirder when I'm sick I'm sorry you got sick but that's rad Um, (laughs) maybe I should get sick more often come up with more no, just keep a journal next to your bed if you get sick. But I will. Definitely don't get sick more often. Or else I have the notes app on my phone. I love the notes app on my phone. How often I use that? It's too chaotic for me. My notes app. I have a list like, of hey, wild here's... Ashira thoughts during the day that go in my notes app. I want to read that so badly. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I am your DM. Horrible things come out of my mouth later God, than in session when I realize something that'd be funny and then it happens and everyone immediately is upset. It's great. <laughs> yeah, no, my notes app is a mix of hey, poetry, grocery list, homebrew D and D items, notes I wanted to bring up with my therapist, like that sort of <laughs> lineation, but. Yeah, so you guys brought the Omniscient Codex to um, Charlotte in Nistra. And I guess you guys were all immediately suspicious of Charlotte. Can I help you, Stevie? We'll be going to break shortly. Um, Nistra, the small town where you met Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Bringing it back to the discussion. I think it wasn't even so much that we didn't trust Charlotte. It was like we realized what we had. Yeah. And like the the worry of giving it to someone that we don't know a hundred percent when it's something that is that powerful. But I don't know. You I I I think Charlotte is one of my favorite NPCs so far. Well that is one of my questions that I wanted to bring up is like, do you guys have any favorite NPCs so far? I mean, D has to be number one. 
<laughs> I am going to hit you with my fan. It was promise. fun arguing with the. It's not a promise, it's a threat. Hot. Uh, I yes. love Charlotte, though. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, what did you say? I said D was a very D is a very good character and I really enjoyed the like argument confrontation that happened. <laughs> Great. Um but yes, Charlotte is another top top tier. Hey. Nimbus. <gasps> Nimbus is my Nimbus! favorite. Nimbus! Yeah. I love Nimbus. We will I get into Nimbus. him later on, but I'm so boy. I love Nimbus. Goodest boy. Mm hmm. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. <laughs> just a little guy. <laughs> he just wants to take a nap. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. He's just a guard dog. A guard yeah. dog. Just a dog. Just a dog. Just a dog named <laughs> Nimbus. <laughs> uh, Dom, any favorite NPCs from you so far? Stevie. Obviously. <laughs> I don't know if I can let Stevie know that, but. Because it'll go straight to her head. A uh, fun fact for everybody watching: um, Dom is Stevie's favorite person. I shit you not. Anytime we are on a call, a Discord call, a Facetime, whatever, she will come running up the second Damiano speaks. As they should. <laughs> so. What an honor! Oh my gosh. That is a... I, I'm glad you guys enjoy Charlotte so much, honestly. Mm -hmm. She's um, helpful, and she hasn't, like, tried to run us around with any of her answers. Like, she very much is just like... Yeah, I'll tell you what I know. <laughs> I'm curious I about one thing, though. I'm curious about how she knew about Mr. Trinket's shop and how you need to change the sign before you walk in. That's my only like. Oh, I didn't even think about that. You know, but I mean, she is a high priestess of the g god of wisdom, knowledge, and the past. So if she's, well, I chalked it up to, but also not high of. I feel like knowing. I feel like she may also have some <laughs> magic to spy on people. I mean, I, yeah. That's I fair. mean. It's like she may be a nosy body. She obviously didn't want anything bad to happen to us if she like warned us about that in the first place, right, 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 you know. Right. But like, she also, could have said like, you know, Mister Trinket's evil, or like just taking care oh. of it herself too. I guess I never really thought about that. She probably really could have just been like, "No, thank you, not in my town." Yeah. Hmm. Well. So, no. I feel like this is a good time for us to take a short break. Uh, we will be back in about 10 or 15 minutes and we will pick up shortly after um, the group has met, met, met Nistra or met Charlotte. Words are hard. God, it's been a long day. I'm sorry. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to go to break. We will see you all shortly. BRB.
and we're back. Welcome back, everybody. We are picking off, or picking, I cannot speak. I am sorry. <laughs> I'm picking <laughs> off each and every one of the characters and killing them off. Yay. Anyways, uh, we are picking up after the group had just uh, given Charlotte the Omniscient Codex. And then uh, you guys all heard about Trinket's shop. And you all decided to head on that way and got into some pretty, a, a pretty interesting situation, I will say. No. <laughs> Nothing wild happened there. I've never been so happy to have awakened mind than in this campaign. <laughs> yeah, that really saved our bacon on this, this one. Because once again, it came down to a cat. Yeah, yeah, because Toby, you had snuck off to the back room because, or while they were interrogating Mr. Trinket, you had snuck off to the back room because you kept hearing, hearing shuffling and movement. And shuffling and, and scratching and, and scratching, and bumps yeah. And, and it's like, what is that? And then as I was gone, somebody got clocked in the head. Oh yeah, because Ash I wasn't there. <laughs> Ashira got bonked on the head by a vase that had fallen off a shell. Honestly, shout out CC. What a great way to get my character out of play. I got you. I got oh, you. <laughs> See, I'm good with uh, semi quick thinking, <laughs> but yeah, because I I want to hear from. Uh, Arlith and Rima about the whole interrogation scene. Like, what you guys thought about that. That was amazing. Um, just to, like, to find out that this, this person was who he was and to, like, drill him about it. I, I, I was scared he was going to attack us, honestly, though. <laughs> he was probably close to attacking us. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you guys rolled really high on your charisma checks, too. Like, whether that be intimidation, persuasion, you guys rolled pretty high on those. Yeah, Arla has pretty persuasive. <laughs> Yeah, um, Bloom. Bloom has pretty decent charisma. Not 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 as good as Talia does, but um, yeah, I think I think the correct two people to do an interrogation. Like, if there has to be a second person, I'm I'm glad it was me. I am more the intimidator, um, and you know, Talia is a lot better at it. But I really enjoyed doing that because. Um, I really like role-playing Bloom with Awakened Mind when she's upset because, like, she still she still doesn't want to make a bad impression in front of her friends, but if she doesn't like someone, she really doesn't care how mean or rude she is. So I, I love just, like, having a little girl, like, curse. <laughs> in people's minds and like no one can hear it mm. yeah bloom gets kind of scary sometimes doing that she honestly does i'm not gonna lie she has nothing to having lose. a direct link to her mind <laughs> well she doesn't act that way with you though my favorite you know. thing though but yeah like bloom literally has nothing to and she is quite literally a child that's not being parented so like try <laughs> for me well I, I just mean like you know yeah, she, no, you she like, can yeah. get kind of bratty when she like really needs something badly enough like you know like I, I can't wait for her to be a teenager Jesus <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, after that or during that confrontation with Trinket, 
Toby discovered a cat in the back room. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. It was it was just a cat. There was nothing spectacular or notable about the cat at all. Just a Except, guy. you know, that he was actually Rory. The missing advisor to Anessa. Was it here that we found out about um the suggestion? Yeah. It yeah. Was after. Yeah, yeah, because after you had snuck Rory out as a cat and brought them back to either the inn or Charlotte's Temple. No, you had brought him back to Charlotte's Temple to end the suggestion spell, but you were able to wait out the polymorph, the mm. true polymorph on him. Didn't I flick him on the nose or something and do like one damage? And then it ended, or am I crazy? Maybe we just. I know that's something you could have done, but Charlotte also we managed to cast dispel magic, essentially on Rory to end the suggestion. But with the polymorph, yeah. So you brought him back to the temple of Sopera, and and you waited out the polymorph spell, and then found out about the suggestion spell. So it was just something I was thinking about doing. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't remember if I did it or if I yeah, thought we had, about it. We had talked about it. But yeah, we had we talked about it. it after the session. But, um, yeah, he told us that not only are there people who aren't who they pretend to be, there are people who are doing things who really can't be held accountable for the things they're doing because it was coercion by magical means that yeah. set them on those paths. Well, and because also with the suggestion spell, you guys learned that it was cast um, like not that long ago, but long enough to where you guys hadn't met yet. Mm. And then because it was higher level magic that the spell was able to last a year and a day, I believe. And we couldn't figure out who, who had cast it. it. Yep. And we also found out from Rory that the wrong people received the mirrors. That, like, the mirrors weren't intended to be delivered to like the princess I think uh, wasn't the second one in the princesses or the well because the one that the was in the princess's queen. room was meant to be for the king and queen her parents and then the other one did end up where it was supposed to go but it never got used okay. which was mm -hmm. for the that king the and queen of Aramore yeah So did learning that change anything for you guys? Learning that Anessa wasn't originally the, supposed to be the one swapped. It increased my levels of anxiety. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it changed a lot. Because it's like, it makes sense. People are getting together for a wedding, so there's naturally going to be a lot of powerful people there. Mm -hmm. I think it like confirmed a little bit of like in that very first um, session with the wedding and everything, we were like, oh my gosh, what is this is like the political intrigue side of it. Is it just someone didn't like Sanessa? It kind of confirmed our their one theory of like, oh, it's the political side of it of they're trying to like get control of. Right. So that immediately we were like, oh, it's another really, really big thing that we need to worry about now. <laughs> Yeah, so I know... Sorry, Sam, go ahead. Oh, I just remembered that that argument was when we found out about... Or, when I found out 
about the people that were following us. Which came up in the last episode. <laughs> Did it? We'll get to that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 because Trinket Oh Sorry. yeah, people are My brain. for you. Trinket was the one who told me. Yeah. He told you that people might be looking for you. Well, and also during that conversation towards the end of it is when you saw his skin begin to change. Realizing that he's not a human or an elf like he appeared to be. How, how did that make you feel, knowing that he wasn't like an actual like that he could be a shape changer, essentially? Suspicious on the connection between that and knowing that people were after me. Fair enough. What do the ties to each have to do with you? I don't know. I want to find that out, though. <laughs> I have a couple of theories. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I, so curious about everybody's theories, and I want to hear them. I have no ideas, no theories. Just <laughs> I deep. think. Who are you? I think maybe there's more mirrors going to more royalty. <clears throat> it's funny you say royalty. That's just my theories. Mm -hmm. Right here. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm convinced I'm the only non-royal in the party. I'm not royal. I'm not royal. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm <laughs> you don't have anyone to be a commoner anymore. <laughs> I just exist. I grew mm -hmm. up next mm -hmm. to a volcano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> that line every time just gets me. <laughs> oh, if there's a war drop, that's the best one. I'm just, I grew up next to a volcano. <laughs> it's the most royal um, of places. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you guys do you guys have any um, favorite moments so far in the campaign? Oh, I bet you picked just one. Um, I like kind of my favorite interactions. I love like the little moments that like Ashira's gotten to have with Bloom or like Talia's gotten to have with Bloom where it's like the big sister little sister vibes of just like I don't know those are just always so wholesome and it's like Toby had a really good like upbringing. Bloom's been through some shit, and I think, like, Ashira having had a decently, like, happy childhood is just, like, here's something my mom would do for me. I can do it for you. Like, your hair. Like, that, like, that was, was such a good moment. And it was, like, the tiny little moments, and I'm just, like, they're so just... I don't know. They're just really Heartwarming. Hard. I don't think my favorite. And then, like, when... I don't know. When you and Toby just gonna be kids, too. And like Talia and I are just like gonna like experience your guys' unbridled joy and chaos. <laughs> <laughs> like I love that. It brings the characters to life for sure, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it can't all just be like, you know, let's stay on track. We gotta save the world. Like, you know, there there's like little conversations we gotta have because we're all getting to know each other too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, fried dough yeah. rings are very important. Facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like some of our travel moments when like we're traveling between like cities and mm -hmm. we take the time to like role play what we'll be talking about either on the travel or on the watch. Um, it really helps to like flesh out the characters and mm -hmm. kind of like pull a little bit of each other's backstories out. I, I really like that. We're like finally starting to open up a little bit to each other. Like we just had a conversation that was really really cool I thought mm -hmm. we gotta be a little bit vulnerable with each other and like that was really fun and they immediately both were awkwardly like okay well good night bye <laughs> gay panic bye <laughs> pretty much I like the slow burn y'all seem to be having I it, it's probably all in my head I don't know but I ship it <laughs> it's 
fine. <laughs> I ship it. Who knows? It's steamy. <laughs> Dom, do you have any favorite moments? Tons. Yeah. Um, Bloom throwing a rock. Oh, um, God, yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't even That is one that. of my favorite oh. moments. Right, that butterfly effect. Uh, I'm going to change my stars. Um, that was a good one. And then You made a knight's tail cannon in our universe. I made a knight's tail cannon, yeah. And then you turned around and was just like, <laughs> completely destroyed everything the said, complete opposite scientific <laughs> just so good you you had the most beautiful, beautiful like moment with Talia and the entire time I was like I'm gonna ruin it and like the longer <laughs> the longer you two were having this like really deep moment the more I was looking forward to ruining it <laughs> we could like see whatever idea went into your head continue to grow and I was just like oh no Oh, we're next. This is gonna be. <laughs> yep. It's like oh, you know, the shooting stars. Uh, you know, <laughs> little be bits of rock burning up in the atmosphere, <laughs> giving the scientific, scientifically accurate description, leaving behind a trail of vaporized air never to be seen again. <laughs> Like uh -huh. <laughs> that's beautiful, Blue. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was to see that. <laughs> um, more recently, Talia's reaction to the mirror. Oh. Uh huh. We'll get to that, I know, but like, I'm I'm trying not to jump around, but that was definitely a solid roleplay moment. Just it was heartbreaking. It was immediately just grabbed my heart and just ripped it out of my chest. Just brilliantly done, and I just CC you doing any of the characters that you've come up with as NPCs, just bringing the world to life and, and the narrative moments, like that first session with the, the visions and just the way you describe things. And, and just when we went to the dream world first, the way you described it and like you talked about these little glowing firefly things and just it still sticks in my head like the image I had of it and like there are so many amazing moments in this campaign that have just really profoundly made me want to come back for more again and again and again mm -hmm. that makes me feel so good because that's, that's my biggest goal as a DM is to leave my players like wanting more I'm like, I, I want to make sure you guys are enjoying this, as you can tell by me checking in every after every session. Also, hydrate, y'all. That's so far away. Who did that? Dan you Kendra. could have break, gotten a break, Thank you, break, Vander. Yeah, thank you, Vander. Uh, you have I to believe do in two. you. You can do it. Dom has I to do two love... because they missed the last one. Yeah, I just love how, like, we all have just giant water bottles. <laughs> We all have. <laughs> Who needs a normal sized cup? That's just silly. Where's our three mandatory bottle. bisexual, like, cups? The ADHDs. I just have two. Real and have at least two drinks on me at all times. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Somebody screenshot those. <laughs> Wait, we need the boobs in mine. Hang on. Mine has. There we go. Amazing. <laughs> Dom's like, I'm not participating in whatever this Dom is. didn't even have one until a second ago. <laughs> How Harlan. dare. <laughs> um, I yeah. drank my third one. I drank my coffee before we started. I yeah, so... <laughs> had mine until a second ago. But, um, <laughs> also, I, Vander, to answer your question, I do have a third drink. It's just sitting on the floor, and I didn't feel like grabbing it. 
anyways. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> Commander asked, but do you have three plus strengths each? <laughs> um, so after you guys uh, found out that Rory was subject to a suggestion spell, um, you all... Uh, Charlotte actually teleported you all back to Nistra, or not Nistra, Holden. After you guys spent a couple, or like one day in Nistra, where you, you also got to meet Selra, the tabaxi that was working at the Catnap Inn. Mm -hmm. She is one of my favorite NPCs, mostly because I managed to make myself cry laughing between an interaction between Stevie and Selra. You were role playing with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I managed nope. to make myself nope. cry laughing. <laughs> it's great. So I feel like that is my peak as a DM, <laughs> being able to do that to myself. Nope. So you all spent a day in Nistra, got teleported back to Holden, in which um, I believe you were looking for the other mirrors. And went back to the castle. We sure did. In which you went to the guest room, found a mirror, and Ashira decided to put her hand up against it and I push into it. I, I want to know more about this decision. I. It was one of those things where I had a thought and then battled in my brain about whether or not to listen to the thought. Because, like, first, Ashira's full of them. And... Remember that thing you said at the beginning of today's episode about only making the best decisions? <laughs> exactly. They're all great decisions. No, my thought was we were trying to fix... I think in her head... And it ended up... It, it technically worked until it, something grabbed me back, and that was very unpleasant. But putting my hand through and casting again that detect evil and good and getting a sense of what was on the other side of the mirror I hadn't planned on something being directly on the other side that grabbed me but like the premise still stood of just like hey we might be able to figure something out mm -hmm. and, and we did and I think, yeah, there was that, again, that yeah. kind of, she just, I don't know. Yeah. Directly proportionate. The more you fuck around, the more you, find, you out. find out. We found out real good. <laughs> yeah, yeah we because did. we ended that episode on um, Ashira being paralyzed while also having her thoughts read. Like, you felt somebody probe into your mind. Yeah, my arm, my wrist got grabbed, and then I couldn't move, and I could just feel them in my head. That was a long two weeks to wait till we played next, guys, yeah. I will say. <laughs> and then who would it turn out to be? Our friend! <laughs> Your good old friend, D. Yeah. The guy that we suspected from the beginning that you were like, all my players think my NPC's bad. He's not bad, he's just... It's understood. Well, no, I... <laughs> he's just maybe willing he's to born end with the it. world maybe it's trauma like he's willing maybe to end the world maybe for his family with it. maybe it's being a chaotic fae maybe it's fabeline hey oh. <laughs> I know Arlette's gonna use that like <laughs> in my day to day life <laughs> yep Amazing. you're welcome but yeah I can fix then... him <laughs> yeah, because that confirmed. I picked up Faye when, because I was actively still casting that spell, and then he came through, and we were all like, oh no. Oh no. Yeah, because I guess, like, I know you guys were all suspicious of Dorian mm -hmm. beforehand. Yeah, but he, he could, he could literally go to the dream realm. Yeah. I mean, he had access to the spell Plane Shift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is suspicious. I... Well, when you're a high-level caster. Yeah. A librarian that can cast plane shift. 
Hey, what are you gonna do besides read all those books? Yeah. Steal his spell book now. I yeah, like good yeah, you guys, luck, you guys, buddy. Yeah, that's gonna go real bad. Well, well. Mm -hmm. we're stealing it. We're stealing that book, or at least find a backup. Yeah. Maybe that will be the the favor. I could be like, you know what, Dorian? Yeah, I'll take you up on it. Give me your book, your only copy. Give it to me. There's no way he would do that. I can tell you that right now. Teach you a spell, also, teach me a spell. I never said he was a wizard. <laughs> a lot of things. Well, because I would like to remind you guys that during the first combat you were in with him, he cast Bardic Inspiration on one of you. Yeah. Oh. X. Well, He's just a bard, guys. A bard totally fine. Just a bard. It's just a bard. Fine. Don't have to just worry like about Talia nothing. Talia is just a bard. Right? Sure. <laughs> Whatever you say. He, he did a semester abroad in bard. Like, <laughs> okay. A semester of bard? Oh my gosh. A semester of no. bard. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, we got a fun interaction that time. He shut me it. up. Like, he rude. did. He cast silence on Bloom. And then that I used awaken mine. Yes, the Shira off <laughs> so badly. I mean, what else are you well, gonna do if you have episode, a ten-year-old back talking you? If I had magical abilities and a ten-year-old mm -hmm. was back talking me, I would cast silence. Are you like? I mean, I just cussed him Reduce. out in his brain. It was. Catapult. It was. <laughs> it was funny watching that for later. Rima mute and then continue to just berate with no one being able to hear her while Talia and Ashira were like actively again another like roleplay moment where Talia and Ashira were convincing him to like no let us help you <laughs> is one of my favorite and then again just watching <laughs> Bloom throw a fit muted was so good watching that back was amazing <laughs> bleep 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 <laughs> she's um, like you mute and go watermelon watermelon water I, I I will say uh, there were a couple of really good puns in that episode and I was so proud of all of you uh, <laughs> and somebody even dropped the line Dom would be so proud yeah, and, and, of and the like, Hey There Delilah. <laughs> yep, that was Hey There Delilah. Watching so... it back, I'm just like, I am. I'm so proud. Oh. I, I, <laughs> I think you, you, you messaged me. I'm pretty sure of just, Hey There Delilah, I am proud. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> but then you also dropped the line, um, you can never trust anybody whose name starts with D. And I'm just like... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my name starts with D. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. Don't buy it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Don't apologize. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> the interest of. <laughs> Intrusive thoughts. What? I'm so sorry. I yeah, adore you. That was I so adore you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. That's so stupid. Reem and I are not allowed to be left unattended. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then bringing us to the whole like interrogation scene too. Like you guys trying to convince him, and then Ashira making that deal with him as well. Varian, I wasn't going to, and then. Everyone had started to walk out, and I was like, no. Like, for a very specific reason that we kind of talked a bit now with Talia, with Ashira. But, yeah, no turning. And then I knew immediately, and Dom again messaged when you rewatched him. I was like, oh, Dom is going to be so disappointed. Because <laughs> I there was no stipulation. A favor for a favor. Yeah. Well, and thing is, is the exact. Way I will admit, too. 
I will admit, because um, I guess I wasn't too familiar with the rules of the Fae, forgive me. Um, I, I forgot in that moment that it's like they are literal. Like, yeah. if you say, like, if they ask, may I have your name, they will take your fucking name. And you no longer and have that have name. Power. And you no longer you have that name. But names but, have power um, and they now control you. They have my full name. Yeah. Well, and then because that whole thing of where it's not full Dorian, name, it's true name. Where Dorian said, like, yeah, there's no illusory script. Even though there wasn't a written contract. Yep. Nope. Uh, and... Shout out to Marcus if you're watching this. I got you. Um, it, yeah, I. My friend Marcus in my Tuesday game. He plays That's... a paladin obsessed with contracts, so he understands the illusory script. That's why Celia got so upset. I know. So upset with it. It was like sessions like, worth. No. No. Yeah. Which She's again, so I want to know more <laughs> because, like, that's personal. <laughs> you were taking it so personal, and she was like, "I'm gonna note that I don't know how to broach this subject with you." And was kind of like, "We're just gonna le like let it lie," and you like just continued to be mad at her. I don't know if that was Tolia or Aralith. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, it might be helpful. Hey, I'm 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 fully Rima is supportive of that. <laughs> Bloom, <laughs> fuck that guy. Like, <laughs> though, to, yes, Arlith is yes, but also Talia is is very upset. Yeah, with you oh. for making such a loosey goosey deal with a fae. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know if it was a sense of, like, I don't know if it was innocence or ignorance in it, of, like, any dealing oh. she's had with higher beings. None of them have necessarily been bad. Because they've all been, like, gods and stuff, not <laughs> they. <laughs> she doesn't know. I will say, that is one of the things I like about our group. Is that like we have that balance of like the it's what my character would do like stereotype but without it being like toxic like oh yeah like oh i'm just gonna be so chaotic and like just set an npc on fire you know like we Not on purpose we're Didn't you set a building on fire <laughs> that was an accident <laughs> That was an accident. Can we? That was a rock, so that's not. You were the one that set a goblin on fire, but he had it coming. <laughs> he had it coming. It's fine. But like, <laughs> he stole from you. But like, I, I'm just saying, we we know like how to balance it without it just being like murder hoboey. You know. Yeah, that that's one thing I definitely appreciate about you guys is that you're not murder hobos. And it all progresses the yeah. story. Like we yeah, we're making a choice that is like connected to our character. Like mine has backstory reasons. Yeah. But it was in such a way that it doesn't take away from what we were doing. It's also but... sort of like push the red button, right? <laughs> um CC puts her. something in front of us. A minorly you know, nuclear option. Right. And we, we try yeah. not to make decisions that can hurt our friends. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah. even even if we can sometimes make chaotic decisions, like I think I think one of the yeah, things like that makes it your best friend standing next to you. <laughs> that wasn't so much a cognizant choice as it was something that uh Hans and I had discussed previously. It was something that we discussed in character creation. So literally about a year ago. It hasn't come into play until now. This is the first time she's gotten angry enough and failed that wisdom save. Trauma response. <laughs> but yeah, so now that we're so taking good. a taking a step back from roasting each other. Anyways. <laughs> I don't know. Because after you guys uh, had that interrogation after some downtime in Holden, you guys all went to the Temple of Sopera, um, again, sort of 
questioning and asking about like these supposed anchors. And unfortunately, Talia was not in that episode. But you guys, we had another, I don't want to say necessarily butterfly effect moment, but it was a moment where Bloom was reached out to and something terrible came of it. Respectfully. No, no, it, it was terrible. Uh, yeah, so Bloom doesn't have very fortunate times around Temples of Sopera. So, uh, you know, the first time uh, she heard a voice in her head that said, you know, just throw a rock. And she did. And the rock hit a wagon wheel, which spooked a horse. And then the horse took off. And then she tried to fix it by making the horse fall asleep. And then it tumbled literally ass over apple cart. <laughs> um, and then a torch from the wagon flew up onto the Temple of Sopera and caught it ablaze. And um, Shira and everyone was able to come and help. My favorite line from that moment specifically was we went to go bury the rat and now the temple is on fire. Um, but also... Hearing those words is wild in character. <laughs> well, and How? also the thing is, I did not expect you to cast sleep on the horse. That was... Like, respectfully, that was, like, an amazing decision, and I love that as a DM. It was a very ten-year-old decision. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, like, I don't know the uh, consequences of my actions, but here. Let's just the try horse it out. We'll stop running if I just put it to sleep. Exactly. Um, yeah, but so that happened, and then this time it was a little like like crystal ball kind of thing that just appeared on the floor the same voice in bloom's head was like oh you should go pick that up and <laughs> bloom was like nah bad things happened last time i listened to you no uh and then uh she tried to mage hand it to keep it from falling because someone ended up like bumping into it and like that was knocked. Ray because Ray had picked it up mm -hmm. and then knocked his hand on the bookshelf and was yeah. going to drop it yeah I tried to mage hand it and it failed and it broke and a demon came out yeah. as it does as, as, as it does <laughs> Well, and then that was a pretty intense combat for Ashira, Bloom, and Toby. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Talia yeah. was off resting after the interrogation questioning of Dorian. Well, and we and we kind of played it a little bit of Aerolith being like, or not Aerolith, Talia being like, I need to go rest. That was like you, really you were intense. Upset in character and then like you were, you were gone. And then we realized, Talia and I were messaging, we're like, oh no, Talia would have felt every time Ashira healed yep. during that fight. And we were Which like, would have just added to my anxiety even more. Yeah. Yeah. So we had that conversation as players. We were like, oh, this is just going to add to the, the tension our two characters in that moment were having of now Talia's not there but know something obviously is wrong because Ashira never heals herself unless it's really bad. Yeah. That was such a good combat, though. Again, Bloom and Toby playing off each other in combat is terrifying and beautiful to behold. Oh, 100%. Can confirm. But also because this, like, demon was essentially targeting Toby like, most of the time, too. Mm -hmm. You're muted, dumb. <laughs> By the way, still muted. You're muted still. <laughs> you ever have one of those days where everything is just <laughs> fighting you every step of the way? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that was that fight. Well, and because 
the demon that you guys were fighting was literally called an eater of hope. So mm. seeing Toby being so like innocent and hopeful, like why would he mm. not target Toby? Oh, so good. Yeah. If I had, I, I'm, I am curious as to what would have happened if I had failed that saving throw. Um, uh, the one where I rolled nearly max damage because I rolled mm -hmm. three twelves and one, an eleven. The one that was supposed to eat my hope, right? Like, yeah, that breath weapon. Sure. I don't because exactly it was what supposed. It was, but... So the thing is, is like with that breath weapon is, it deals like four d twelve of necrotic damage, and I had literally rolled three twelves and an eleven, so that's forty seven points of damage because mm. essentially if like you would have failed I know that you would have been in death saves but would that have like killed you outright at level what was it five mm. I don't know that would have been tw twice your health that wouldn't have been twice your total HP yeah your max HP it would have been an insta death but would have been really stressful <laughs> Yeah, I'd definitely be in saving throws. Um, yeah, well, it's that thing where it's like you would have felt essentially your hope and joy and innocence shrivel up as you fall into death saves. Ashira, it's cold. No! Oh my god. Stop it. Absolutely not. I want you, you all to know if you if there ends up being a PC death, you all will get last words. Oh okay. I... just as an FYI. And for the audience, that is an FYI. If they die, they will get last words. Prepare to be emotionally devastated. Baby spoiler. The first time I have to cast for Vivify, CC understands. But yeah. like Guys, no. <laughs> What? Oh no. Backstory stuff. <laughs> oh, no. It'll be really fine, I promise. Okay, cool. Bloob's gonna learn revivify. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Bloob doesn't know shit. I don't think we can. Bloob doesn't no. know shit. Well, oh, no. as a necromancy wizard, can you? Um, I think I might. Also, I just a reminder it. to the people watching if you have any questions for us, please ask us in the chat. Uh, we'd love to ask, uh, answer any questions that you may have, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think Talia got a little bit of the backstory stuff. Just a bit. It's just a little bit. A little smidge. Not a lot. It'll be really fun when it happens eventually, guys. That's why she's stockpiling diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then after that battle, after you sort of reunited as a group... Mm -hmm. Um, because during or after that battle or before that battle, you guys also found out that the Temple of Darius was having some trouble. I think it was right, right be before. before you're having the conversation if they knew like if anything else was happening at any of the other temples, and they're like, Well, not ours, but but Darius the temple has something weird going on, and we were like, Cool, we'll check that out eventually. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys did end up checking that out, and you met Sandy and Nimbus, the two lone souls in the Temple of Darius in Holden. Because <laughs> I know uh, Bloom said Nimbus was one of their favorite NPCs. But the stress of that entire and, encounter. <laughs> well, and the entire thing was, fun fact for the audience... The, my roommate's dog was barking in the background and so in order to make it somewhat like not, I don't know in order to incorporate it into the campaign I created Nimbus which was the dog of the temple just chilling mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just chilling just a dog yeah, it, it was it was too too, thank you Hunter um but yeah because then Sandy had told you guys about how the plants had started dying, the candles won't stay lit, that whole situation. So. 
and then the whole investi or it wasn't you you guys didn't really spend a whole lot of time in the temple of darius because um i cheated i wouldn't say cheated you were smarter than i was which is not hard <laughs> I, to do i cheated the dm out of their investigation that they had planned for us <laughs> No, it was again. No, it was all those great. things where your description of what was happening was really—I don't know—it was really good, and it led to us all being like, "Oh, this is actually really bad." Yeah, <laughs> well, immediately because... everyone was like, "Oh no!" Well, yeah, because I had oh, described because no. um, after he had offered to Bloom and Toby to ring the bell, and after Ashira, you went up to investigate it you discovered those like essentially like finger marks on the inside of the uh the bell and then the roots growing all the way down into the cellar that i could see with magic yeah we were all like this is not great how do we no. fix this well because then you you guys had left briefly mm -hmm. to go get somebody from the temple of sopera in Holden to cast the hollow spell on the bell but when you came back Sandy was gone and the dog wasn't a dog was it Nimbus? Had, was it detect magic up didn't someone that there was trans magic? that Nimbus had transmutation magic over top it of was him. it was because I was talking uh yeah I was I was using awakened mind I was like who's a good boy are you it's like, well, I sure think I am. Ah! <laughs> scared the shit out of you. Well, because I believe Toby had cast a tech magic, and then Bloom was using Awakened Mind, and then Toby using the bonded rings was just like, hey, that's not a dog. And Bloom was trying to act chill. Immediate panic from the two adults upstairs, where <laughs> we were like, oh no. Yeah. Mm. Well, and then uh, I guess moving on from that, when you guys were all like, well, because at at one point when you guys did return to the temple, sorry, I forgot this, um, because Bloom had snuck up the side of the tower, faked an earthquake, and scared <laughs> off Sandy, who was at the top. <laughs> Again, so can, we, can we talk about Sandy for a minute, though? Like yeah. Mm -hmm. the character design mm -hmm. just the aesthetic of Sandy was really cool I like that a lot mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with that, that. Uh, in what regard like just his looks yeah um well cause like one of my favorite things is is like when um like because he was an earth ganasi I love when they have like those elements of whatever I guess elements that they're a part of like in their character because like i've played an air ganasi in the past where it's um like she always has a soft breeze around her or her hair looks like it's always moving with the wind or like i've played a fire ganasi where it looks like her hair is literally made of fire mm -hmm. and so incorporating stuff like that where it's like it looks like his hair is made of like stone and moss and like, I'm assuming to, like, when you guys first met him. Because he... He's just a dude. He looked like just a guy. He was one of the few that when we first met him, we weren't all immediately suspicious. Like, your uh -huh. description of him, his demeanor... I think for the most part, and the rest can probably speak to it too, but, like, kind of put us at ease. Like, there wasn't that initial, like... This guy! <laughs> it's suspicious. Which doesn't happen with NPCs in this campaign very often. No, and guess what? <laughs> we will never trust an NPC again. You're fine. No, he it was he was so well done and like the introduction of him was like it was really good. Thank you. I think he's my favorite bad guy to date. Like I don't know that I'd consider D a bad guy, but like, yeah, 
Well, and it's just that thing where it's like because um, Sandy came off as like this very like sheepish like he he very much gave off like druid with maybe like a couple of uh, um, levels dipped into like cleric essentially. He's just um, tending to the temple. He was just tending to the temple exactly. Mm. Um, but then like after you guys were all keeping watch after. Bloom had scared him off and Ray had started casting Hollow. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to say it was one of my favorite moments where I was just like, yeah, he was a cleric, but he never said who he was worshipping. He mm. never questioned it. No, that, that was another one of my favorite like introductions is where I was just like, he looks completely different wearing like dark metal armor and these veins creeping up his neck. Like, I, I had so much fun with that because, again, it was one of those NPCs that you guys weren't immediately suspicious of. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the subversion of that was part of what made him so compelling as a villain. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that it caught us all off guard was was really well done. Yeah, because there was a couple points where I know, like, Talia and I think he either I or Bloom rolled an insight and I think it was when I had brought up the hollow spell initially and he had a kind of weird reaction but you guys both rolled really decent if I remember right well because it was Ashira you had rolled insight but I'm also just like his body language doesn't max match the expression on his face like he might look concerned but it was because you rolled so abnormally high on the insight where I, I was think just we like, all picked up something different from it. And it was because like during that conversation, we all at some point rolled. Because like, like Talia yeah. and Bloom were off put by his reaction but couldn't place why. But Ashira, it was oh, you who noticed that, hey, his body seems relaxed and fine. It's only his face that's concerned. Like Yeah. Cause then I think was it in the Bloom was I, I was remember. suspicious of either yeah. Nimbus or him. Because, mm. like, one or both of them was, like, scared of the other. It kind of looked like to me, but I didn't yeah. know which one was, like, the good one and which one was the bad one. And then when I found out that Nimbus is a large creature, not even large, like a ginormous creature that can't even fit inside a building, then I was like... Is homie upstairs okay? Like, like is, we were is, upstairs is, and we're like, he's not okay. He's not okay. I mean, so I I was kind of wondering about that, but then at the same time, it's like Nimbus was so chill about like being a large creature. So I didn't. Yeah. I was like, my brain. It, it was either like too late at night or something. I was like, one of them's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I absolutely love Nimbus, especially because like now getting into the battle between um, you guys and Sandy, Toby. because because Toby had fallen down the stairs, come face to face with Sandy, looking completely different, and then after you ran away, he rolled a natural twenty on his attack of yep. opportunity, mm -hmm. and I I just would like to say. You are extremely lucky that I did not roll any better on my damage because otherwise you would have been knocked unconscious in that first I hit. Am aware. Yeah. Um I will say I regret not counterspelling the um flame strike in that encounter. And the only reason I didn't was because Bloom had shouted Hellish Rebuke first. Because she chose a reaction spell before I said anything. Narratively, I just decided that Toby hesitated. Uh, and we took that hit. But, like, that led to that, that <laughs> roleplay moment afterwards where I was like, I should have counterspelled that. Yeah. Attack. Well, and that became a like honestly a beautiful roleplay moment after you did that. Because um 
again, one of my favorite things is to check in with you guys and seeing like how you're doing as players or like what your player, what your characters are thinking. And so having Toby, like you being like, I could have done better. I could have shielded that attack. I could have counterspelled that like that, like was gut wrenching, but also so beautiful mm -hmm. in the same way. Because it shows, like, yeah, Toby is just a child, but he's also, like, actively learning from this. Mm -hmm. Learning from his trauma. How about that? That's crazy. Anyways. Bloom's um, <laughs> just an angry little that tries very hard to be calm. <laughs> She's, she has angry moments. We see each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see you, you she, see me. Well, I'm going to cheer like, understand each other for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, because like, I, I wanted that combat to be intense for you guys. I did. Because mission um, accomplished. I, well, and it's that whole thing of like, as I'm still learning to balance combat as a DM, where you guys are either able to quickly wipe out um, an enemy, or um, I, I just want to make sure that I don't I don't, I, I don't want a TPK. That is not my goal. It is not my goal to kill you guys. For now. But <laughs> it, it's just a thing where it's like, I want to give you guys enough of a scare to where you're like, oh shit, it, it, it's getting real. Mm -hmm. So it, it is never my goal to TPK you guys. Because mm. frankly, I don't know what I would do if there was a TPK. <laughs> Respectfully, I do not know what I would do. Time jump, new characters, the gods try again. Or no, time jump. You guys are the uh, group on the other side of the world that also received the vision. At the same time, yeah, we just see what they've been doing. You're like, oh damn, they died. Well, we're just better. Okay, Their first mission is to go to the temple start. where it was the last place that the, this group was seen. <laughs> yeah, I've actually Ooh. got multiple characters as backups based on how it goes down. Like, if it's just Toby, I have one. If it's all of us, it's another. If it's only two or three, I have a third. And well, they all have different stories and, and how they're going to come in. and it's, it's We like, can't all not, die until we all know to, each other's trauma. <laughs> not to jump to forging fates, but like that's how I feel. Where it's like I'm sitting here, if like Finnick goes down, I have plans. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, cool. okay, I am going to kill you. <laughs> I just saved your life. We are not getting into this now. If you want to watch us get into it, watch us on Monday. Anyways. Well, this, one was, this one was stressful because we were so spread out. And but then still clumped together in a sense. Well, no, it's just like the beginning of this fight. We were so spread out. Yeah. And like, didn't know at first anything was happening. And then it yeah. was like a rush to get there. And it was, it was... Uh. <laughs> there were and like... even once, like, you know, up in the room, and and things were happening in the stairwell, and like, mm -hmm. I I couldn't see it in line in sight to use my bow, so I had to like run up, and then when you run up, there's not enough space to no and do anything. We were just trying to block him from getting past, so there was no you and I weren't getting out of that melee range. And then Bloom yeah. was looking outside at a dragon. Yeah. yeah. She's just like, oh. <laughs> well, because I'm going to be honest here. here. Of all the characters, the one most likely to have seen a dragon at some point would be Blue. So, hello, raiders. Welcome. Oh, in. my God. Oh, hi. hi, Ampod. Thank you for the raid. Welcome hi. in. We're going to go to some tea right now. <laughs> hello, hello. But. Yeah, so jumping back to that point of all the characters, um, Bloom would have been the most likely to have seen a dragon in the past because of where she's from. 
having seen it in the distance was so funny to me earlier in that session of just being like, oh gosh, I'm not familiar enough with the land to know what large flying creatures there are. And just Dom immediately jumping in and start listing off a whole bunch of random things as Toby was so good. It was great, honestly. <laughs> and everyone being like, I don't think he saw anything. <laughs> But then, like, not knowing, oh, Toby was so far away. And then we were all there, and there was just no, there was nowhere for us to go. There was yeah. no and spreading it out once we were together. kind of cornered yourself in the tower with the stairwell, so. So bad, and Toby was so hurt. Yeah, because <sighs> Toby almost went down, like, a few times. Yeah. Nice. Um, if it weren't for Ashira doing that, like, aura of healing. Yeah, Kobe would have, would have been dead. cooked. Also, the first time I think she's pulled out that aura. Yeah, it was. Like, that was a very different feeling for Ashira, too. Oh, um, really? Yeah, really like... Popped off. She can, again, she can heal. She was taught how to do all of that in the temple, but that's not her first instinct. And then, yeah, that was, it was, it was a different feeling for her, but in a way it was the, I can do this and maintain concentration and continue to hit things. Yeah. I feel like if Ashira had like a catch be don't get mad, get revenge. Like, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't go well when she gets mad. I oh, she still feels so bad. Yeah, because that was a pretty intense combat, but then you accidentally damaging Talia. It was a decent amount of damage too. It was double digits. It was. I think it was like sixteen or nineteen points of damage. I think, yeah. Um. Yeah, that losing control, which again. For you guys, like, that's a mechanic CC and I have had in place since before the campaign started. And we have, like, I have a list of, like, different things that upset her to a different level. And when it reaches, oh, like, a shit. four or a five, we start making wisdom saves. CC determines the DC in the moment, yeah. depending on what it was. And, like, Toby was so hurt, Bloom was hurt. Yeah, well, and it was that thing where it's, like, because... The children were the most hurt out of everybody. Yeah. And you she, were she so angry, angry. And angry at myself. Yeah. So it, it's just that thing where it's like, that was honestly a soup. That was a pretty high DC. If you would have made that, I would have been shocked. Yeah. Because of how angry and passionate you were in that moment. Because, yeah, I took half that damage because it also hurts me when I lose control. And then Talia took all of it. Uh, and then I was legit like we got to the end of that combat and like both Ashira and I were like actually crying. I had tears. I was like, I just hurt Talia. I I want to know how Talia felt about that. I know we discussed it briefly, but um it's just like I'm I'm curious because I know you didn't expect it. No, not at all. She was very, very shocked of like uh, what, wait, what, what, what just like <laughs> anyways just like <laughs> like what the what just happened like I, I had never seen anything like that I wasn't there the only other time that she had lost any semblance of control that was the fight that I wasn't there for so this is the first time Talia seeing her lose control like that. Right. Well, and then because I know Ashira felt so bad about that. It's it's one of those things. Again, like I as a player had sent seasick different levels of like surface level fears and some deeper ones. And one of her like biggest things is like if she fully loses control, people are going to get hurt. Mm. 
Yeah. She goes into the avatar state. She, I do. I go into the avatar <laughs> state. Doesn't matter who's near me. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad. But, but it, it so... led to really good RP. No, it yeah. led to amazing roleplay. Sorry, Dom, you were going to say something? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Well, because after that, you guys spent some time in a field, sort of recuperating, having just a little nope. bit of quiet time. No? We had the before field time, we didn't we? Go oh, somewhere? before field time. I'm thinking of the wrong episode. We buried his body. We buried his body, and then we got into the whole like, oh, I want to be slingshot after. I die. <laughs> um, forgive me. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is we can't skip that the part. Back of my head. <laughs> Catapult. Sorry, Don't do. the whole funeral thing. Bloom asking, why do people have funerals? Please. I Go ahead. shout out to Bloom and Toby for constantly asking Ashira and Talia. Like questions that are both surface level and so deep at the same time. Like, how do you pray to a god, and why do we? Why do some people bury their dead? And I'm like, okay, I <laughs> this is a lot, <laughs> and I adore you. Actually, both. not a simple question, but uh, why do people have funerals? <laughs> that that was Bloom's question. Why do people have funerals? Just such like it's like a, such a. How, where do we get babies? Where do babies come from? It, it is that vibe! And you're like, what is the appropriate answer? This, she is a child, yes, but also, like, you've, she's seen so much. She doesn't need, like, the child answer. She needs an actual answer. She's very, like, logic focused. You know, mm -hmm. to her, it's like, why do you, like, you know, what's, what's the point if the. You know, are you just trying to make sure no one finds it? Like, that makes sense to her. It's like, you know, make sure no one finds it. But then, like, you mark it yourself, and it's obvious. So she's like, it's clearly not because they don't want anyone to find it. Uh, so, like, in, in her mind, there's no emotional, like, reason to like bury a body you know like they're not using it anymore mm -hmm. like that's that's materials for a spell now <laughs> it's just friends future friends future friends <laughs> future friends <laughs> pretty much but then like ashira when you talked about like the different kind of funeral or funeral rites that people had mm -hmm. that was great I love that. Thank you. And then, of course, um, Toby coming in was like, Earth, water, fire. What about <sighs> air? And thing is, is like, I do want to say there is such a thing as air burial in real life. However, it it's is not. much more <laughs> graphic than people getting slingshot. I just wants to be slingshot. <laughs> Toby just wants as my good friend Hunter once said, yeet. Well, Blue, there's, there Blue is, Blue. you can actually, and this is a thing you can pay for. Yeah. Uh, you I, can actually pay to go, like, have your ashes put in a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like, when I'm talking about an air burial, I cannot say the word burial for some reason. Um, there is a funeral thing where it's basically like, Hey, we leave your body out in this area and then we let birds take apart your body and fly away with them. That is what a real air burial is. But you can also go into a rocket. Yes. And it's basically yeah, it's like a Voyager burial. mission where like you literally just keep going until forever. <laughs> you see all the planets. I think that's so cool though because like Apparently, they they let your family and friends come to like watch the rock launch and stuff. Like, <laughs> okay, I bet. You know, like why pay for like a whole like, funeral? Like they're hosting it, and everyone gets to see rocket. My thing is, is like, because I have a plan for like after like 
I perish or whatever. But also I'm sitting here like, can I use like half of my body to do one thing and the other half just go to space now? Like, So, so fun fact, like, and th this is true. This, this is like my, my actual plan. It, there is actually a plot of land on the moon for ashes and they do actually send pods of people's ashes. And I just love the idea of like all my witch friends being able to like on every full moon like i just help them out like a homie and instead that. of being on someone's like mantle and having people have to like <laughs> like keep track of like oh like who's gonna get like the urn or whatever like i don't want to collect dust on someone's mantle or make people like visit a graveyard or anything like where they gotta like pay to keep that plot like if people want to visit me they can just look at the moon and there there i'll be i love that um now <laughs> granted i would like to just finish off where we left off last time uh so we gotta rush through this a little bit but because so after the whole funeral discussion which again is an amazing moment. I highly recommend you go watch it. Um, you guys, um, after officially like learning about like some of the anchors and where they're located, decide you wanted to head to Windborn, the capital of Gillimore, at like the northeastern point of the city, in which you make the travel out to Nistra, which is eastern, and head to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. and as you guys talk to Charlotte she's just like okay I can do this but you need to give me a day to prepare and you're like okay cool and then you go to Trinket's shop because you heard that he might have fled the city and mm -hmm. that's what you do you come back to an empty shop with only a single mirror in the back of the room and I will have to say that is one of my favorite DM moments so far. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, because I know Bloom had put her staff on mirrors in the past. That was the trigger is when she pulled away her staff. Mm -hmm. Which was my fault. It's okay. Uh, we just it, kept it charging it. Choice. It was the logical choice. <gasps> Yeah, because you guys kept casting magic at it after the whole vision scenario. Mm -hmm. And you just saw the glow getting brighter. Yeah, for you three, those visions, though. <laughs> oh my god. The visions. It was wild. So my best just, like, character RP that I've gotten to witness was just, like, Talia. That was like, great. Aerolith, freaking amazing job. Because, like, everyone sitting at the table, like, we all felt that emotion. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was, like, it was a really cool moment to witness. All three of you guys, like, having your moments and the different reactions for me being able to, like, watch it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed role playing that. Um, really kind of dropped into some like role play and acting chops that I haven't gotten into in a while. It was it was really satisfying to to get through and to see everybody's reactions and stuff. There's something to be said about being able to pour your own hurt into your character to role play a moment like that and seeing how visceral Talia reacted like I, I was almost a hundred percent certain that part of Aerolith was in that, and it was just there was some real emotion coming through in that. And I don't know how you reach that point with Talia, but you did the damn thing, and and it, it was, was so good, powerful. Thank you. Well, and like another thing I do want to bring up about that mirror is that Ashira, the DC was 20. I just made it, yeah. So you had just made that saving throw. 
And that was, I think, I was, was I rolling at disadvantage still? Yeah, because the initial roll was a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. Yeah. And the fact that you rolled a 20 on disadvantage. My, I'm cleric, my, my wisdom Your mic got weird. Oh no! Oh, well, okay. now you're fine. Hello. Hello. Um, no, like that's one of the things. Like being a cleric, wisdom is like my stat, and I think like right now it's like a plus seven. So, I there was a decent chance I was gonna make it, and I, of course, we're not gonna ever like truly know, but I was so terrified that because you started with the lowest and then continued to go up and then you got to that was the last one who wasn't in a horrific state of mind and i think everyone else is like what do you mean ashira too of course it didn't happen but i was like terrified all four of us are being completely incapacitated by whatever right. this is and it was it was probably the first time as like a player and my character the realization of like Oh, we really fucked around and found out too too far. Too far this time. Yeah. I really liked that, like, if I were, like, a script writer or something, I could not have written better than you being the only one that, like, wasn't. Like, like it could not have been better written and just by, like, yeah. it was Pure so luck. cool. Yeah, that, like, because if you think about it, uh, you having to just watch all of us in pain was probably horrible. your worst fear anyway or like not being able yeah. to save us so right like up there. You, you, didn't even, like, right up there. To, you didn't even need to fail the wisdom save it was so good like that was the coolest part of that is the like not yeah you, you didn't need it. is her i'll just say it it's her second biggest fear so we didn't get we didn't get to see her like number one one play out but like no, and I didn't know what to do because I, I was like, do I shatter the mirror? Do I try and snap you out of it? I was like, what if something comes through this mirror? And you didn't know if like any of those things were happening to us or not. So you're no, like, I'm which so one of them do I get out of it first? Like, which one looks like they're in the danger right now? And it's like, yeah, you had to make some tough decisions, dude. It was great, though. I it loved... So well done, CC. Thank you. No, because, like, it, it's just a thing where it's, like, again, I feel like I could not have, like, scripted this. But it's also that thing where it's, like, the fact that the person that cares, I feel like, in my opinion, the most about the people that she's with. Like, in that sense of, like... And then also you catching that glimpse of what they're going through in the reflections of the mirror. Mm-hmm. That part I did know would happen if anybody had saved. You would see what everybody was going through. Yeah, that was hard. But then also the fact that you chose not to pry about it when you woke them up about it. Or later on. Unless they were... I think of I get Mike home eventually. She doesn't want like she saw how much it hurt them that to like to cry about it would essentially be making them feel that pain again in some form. And that's right. like the last thing Ashira wants to do. She is yeah. concerned about Bloom a bit more now than she was. <laughs> Cause don't Bloom mess with wild. <laughs> don't mess with right. with her. <laughs> but uh -huh. really yeah. loves <laughs> Because I had picked up a ping off of Wither before, just the tiniest yeah. bit of magic, and was like, we're just, we're gonna, we'll, we'll touch base on that later. And then seeing, like, what was happening with you, she was like, okay, this is a lot, and we can't do anything with it now. <laughs> yeah. Just for but the recap's sake, should we go into what all of the visions were? Um, I will go briefly into it. And just because we do need to wrap up soon, just because I have stuff I need to do. But because uh, Talia's vision was of the person she cared most about getting hurt 
and that person was being hurt by Talia's parents. Bloom was a giant demon holding Wither. Bloom was pleading with them, and then the demon smashed Wither onto the ground. And then Toby. (laughs) Because Dom had asked me the question, is this the fear that Toby is aware of? And me, not knowing, just said, yes. And it was bees. When we were making our characters, uh, Hans had actually sent us a questionnaire to help us understand our characters better. And one of the questions in that is, what is your biggest fear? And I wrote bees. <laughs> My thing is, I, adore you I cannot so find much. that questionnaire. The only uh-huh. one I can find that questionnaire from is hands. <laughs> the only so one I that can, you can pull it off my character sheet because it's in the notes in D and D Beyond. Yes. That, um, that's my only one. That's my one regret about that scene is that I did not know your character's fears beforehand. Hmm. But also watching the fear cross everybody's faces when I asked, <laughs> "What is your character's biggest fear?" We all immediately panicked. <laughs> so, I got yeah, like a seventeen, was... so I was like, yeah, "No, you got an 18 total." <sighs> Yeah, it's true because I had like a plus and I was like, I'm probably fine. And then you failed, and then just the way that CC moved and was like, and a shiro. A shiro. And I was like, a 20 didn't save. <laughs> you saved, but at what cost? Arlith, are you okay? I think yeah, they- my my camera mount fucked up my monitor. Oh no! Oh, no! Oh, um, but yeah. oh no! It's been mounted there for months, and then um, I don't know what happened. I watched my camera go like this, and a black bar shoot up my mo- my monitor. No. Well, shit. Months. They're um, just to um, I guess wrap up the wrap up. Um, uh, no, wrap up the one year mark. Sorry, again, words are hard. It's been a very long day. Wrap Wrap up up the the recap. recap. Jinx. Anyways. After that whole debacle, you spent some time in the field. Just relaxing. Went back to the catnap inn where you rested up. And then the next day, Charlotte was able to begin to teleport you all. But not before Talia saw a few guards marching in some familiar armor. And that's where then you were yeeted out of Nistra. And for the first time, I inside checked you successfully. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then you guys ended up in Wimborne, this glorious, magnificent city that is as pompous as pompous can be. I'm about it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, unless you guys have any burning questions, also the watchers, if you have any burning questions, put them in the chat now, please. And we will answer them to the best of your abilities. But, so overall, um, how are you guys feeling about the game so far? I love it. And I love all of you guys. Oh, uh-huh. Inside check. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun to, like I said, like kind of stretch my RP and like acting and role playing or uh, storytelling prop uh, muscles again. It's been so long since I've played. Yay. Ditto. I really like that we aren't like pulling punches with the, the heavy stuff we're doing it in like you know especially like cc you're doing it in a really graceful way and that's why i always like i always say this campaign is kind of like avatar as airbender you know where it's like young people you know going through really like adult things um but yeah. done in a really tasteful way um and yeah it's i look forward to every session my heart 
I can say without exaggeration that in every campaign I've ever played in, from the time I was in high school, there have been days where I dreaded the sessions. Days where I was just not feeling it, days where I was dragging my feet, days where I was like, I don't really want to go. And again, without exaggeration, that has never happened in the year we've been playing this campaign. <laughs> Says the ominous voice from the background. That no one else can hear but us. <laughs> uh, no, that that is... God, I don't want to cry, but I'm going to, because... <laughs> This past year has meant a lot. I... God damn it! Dom! <laughs> you knew what you were doing. I... have been blessed with some of the most amazing players. And everybody is great. And so forgiving, because we all have those days because I've been going through those days. But I always look forward to QPD because you guys are amazing. I'm having so much fun and I feel like I was so blessed for this to be my first long-term campaign as well. I know, Dom, I had asked you to join because, hey, in case I need help, but I, I don't regret that decision one bit because the way everybody interacts with each other and the way that things have been going so far, again, have been so great. And you guys add to the story so much. And I'm having so much fun with this. You guys give me so much to work with. Um, uh, also, Hunter, no, I did not. But my friend Hunter had flowers delivered to my apartment uh, celebrating the one year of QPD. That is so adorable. So they are currently out in the living room but thank you Hunter. I am so thankful that we've made it a year so far. Also right now it's 11-11. Iconic. Ooh. I love that. But um, I cannot wait for the next year of QPD. We have... So much more to go, oh. story-wise. We have so much more to go, story-wise, and so much uh, character backstory to delve into. So, I think this is where we're going to call it for the night, with me being an emotional wreck. But, um, thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in tonight. Um, we will be back in two weeks with QPD. And... Make sure to uh, tune in tomorrow for investigation check. Nope. So tomorrow's investigation check had to be rescheduled. Oh. Uh, it's rescheduled for October 3rd. But so next week Monday. we have Forging Fates on Monday. And then on Thursday next week we have investigation check with Zach Savage. So make sure to tune in for those. Um... Anyways, we hope you guys stick around for the raid, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.